but it could be the toughest road trip the Argos make all season. The Ticats, it seems, can never wait to get the Argos on home turf. Home turf is Iberwind Stadium in Hamilton, where tonight the Argos and Ticats wrap up week three on the CFL on CBC. Two veteran quarterbacks have struggled early in the season. The Argos' Matt Dunnigan more than Mike Kerrigan of the Ticats. The Argos thought they'd see a lot of offense this season, but most of it has been against them, and moments like this have been few and far between. The Argos are winless, and their much-talked-about no-huddle offense has them hurrying for their first win before it's too late to meet preseason expectations. They fell far short last week when Dunnigan threw a CFL record-tying seven interceptions against the Bombers. Hamilton's Mike Kerrigan has had some trouble finishing drives in his first two games, but he gets the start tonight. His chances of finishing are good, though, when he connects with Earl Winfield, who is re-emerging as one of the CFL's primary game-breaking threats. When Kerrigan goes cold, Todd Dillon is hot coming off the bench. In fact, he combined with Winfield for the winning points against Ottawa last week. And so tonight at Ivor Wynn, head coaches Don Matthews and Al Bruno look for victory through improved performances by their quarterbacks. On a beautiful summer evening, pro football's longest standing rivals are set to meet at Iverwind Stadium in the Steel City. It is perfect. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Hamilton. And we're delighted to have an audience tonight. Viewers in southern Ontario able to join us on this occasion because the blackout has been lifted. Welcome to you. At the start of the season, the Argos were talking about posting 40 points a game, shooting out the lights. Now they're not as much concerned with winning big as they are with simply winning. And Don, there are better places to try for win number one than Ivor win, where it's always tough for Toronto. Ivor win, or as some call it, never win stadium. The Toronto Argonauts, Ron, were the talk of the preseason with their no-huddle offense. It hasn't produced a win yet, but Don Matthews is going to stick with it. Well, you know, Don, Don has put it in at the beginning of the season. He says it's always there if they want it, they can use it or not. But Don put it in. He believes in it. I think they'll stay with it. Matt Dunnigan is the man who operates that no-huddle offense. Dunnigan had his problems last week against Winnipeg, tying a league record with seven interceptions. Will that bother him coming into this game? No, it can't. A quarterback can't let interceptions from the week before bother. You have enough trouble getting through the game. Even if he throws six tonight, he's got to go out and keep throwing because that means they're usually behind. Uh, quarter, good quarterbacks don't worry about it. Mike Kerrigan started the ball game last week against Ottawa for Hamilton. He was replaced by Todd Dillon. And they won the ball game. The star of the game was Earl Winfield. He caught three touchdown passes from three different throwers. Well, Winfield can catch a football, but even on returning kicks, that's his specialty. So he's got to have a big season if they're going to win. The Hamilton Tie Cats looking to move into a first place tie in the Eastern Division with a win tonight. The Argos just looking for a win. Scott? Don, is it getting tougher to play defense in this league? We'll put that question to veteran Argo defensive back Carl Brazley when he joins us on Live at the Half. We'll hear from the head coach of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Mike Riley will speak to us from Winnipeg. He has the surprise team in the CFL this season. And we'll preview the Prince of Wales Stakes that goes tomorrow at Fort Erie. You're watching the CFL on CBC. An exclusive presentation of Miller Lite goes down great among friends. By Priority Courier, the official courier of the CFL. And by Diet 7 Up, challenge your taste. Welcome back to Iberwind Stadium in Hamilton. It's a beautiful summer evening, a temperature of 28 degrees. The wind really shouldn't be a factor, and we don't anticipate any precipitation before this game draws to a conclusion. The Hamilton Ticats with a record of 1-1. One one. The Toronto Argonauts 0-2. Ken Lazaruk is the referee tonight. He and the other members of the officiating staff are moving into position. As the Hamilton Tiger Cats prepare to kick off, John Field and Lorenzo Rivers are back for the kickoff. 
Paul Osbaldiston getting set to get this game underway. The Thai Cats coming from behind to defeat the Ottawa Rough Riders last week. The Argos losing their home opener to Edmonton and losing last week to Winnipeg. Rivers starts back with the kickoff. And Rivers runs into three downfield tacklers led by Bobby Dawson just inside the 30-yard line. A 22-yard run back after a 67-yard kick. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about this no-huddle offense of the Argonauts tonight. They feel with Matt Dunnigan, with his veteran, being the veteran that he is, he can execute it. A lot of quarterbacks would have problems with it, but what they've taught him to do, you do the same thing in the no-huddle that you would call in the huddle. So we'll see how it works for them. A lot of people equate this offense to what you see in the final two minutes of the half or the end of the ball game. You'll get into details and talk about that a little later. Kevin Smelly, the ball carrier, stopped after a gain of about one. The Argos are going with two Canadian running backs, Ryan Hansen and Kevin Smelly. Right, they decided that they want to put him in there. They like the way Kevin Smelly runs the football, although on that first down you couldn't tell it. They say he will run for them tonight. We feel that Daryl Smith, who's caught 15 passes, has to be Dunnigan's key, but Dunnigan is the key to this offense, and he's got to get it on track. Hand off to Smelly, and Smelly gets the first down. They were very impressed with what he has done in the past couple of weeks in practice, and two consecutive carries. That time, he picks up the first down, and again, the Argos move up over the ball, ready to go. Well, they talk about running the football. That means middle linebacker Daryl Patterson has to stay at home. He's got to stop it. Covington has to make the pass rush, and Jim Rockford has to play center field if they're going to be successful. Three consecutive calls for Kevin Smelly. He was signed by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, actually drafted by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. He did not sign with them. He was traded to the Toronto Argonauts, and Smelly definitely has the size and, according to the coaching staff, the credentials to be a good one. He's 5'10", 190. He played at the University of Massachusetts. The pass complete to Daryl Smith. He's got a first down at the 50 of the tie cap. Daryl Patterson, the middle linebacker, made the tackle. While Daryl Patterson drops to the zone to the wide side of the field, but Daryl Smith starts to the outside. Watch it. Now stop, come right back underneath it, makes the catch, and then Frank Robinson playing his first game knocks off Jordan, and Patterson has to be there to make the tackle. They hit screen to Jeff Boyd. He gets a block from Daryl Smith, but he can only move about six yards. Matthews is telling us before the game, he likes it hot. He wanted it hot here tonight. And I believe this, and I think everybody does. It takes more energy to play defense than it does offense. He figures with this no-huddle offense, by the fourth quarter, if they don't shoot themselves in the foot, they will be in control of the game. And that's what he wants to do. The temperature at 5 o'clock this afternoon at field level was 43 degrees. Big hole for Smelly. First down, Toronto. And the Argos are putting together perhaps their most impressive drive of the season. Of the regular season, that's right. They haven't had many drives where they just marched down the field. Dunningham has been throwing all the time. The history on Don Matthews' offense is throw the football. But the big thing is they have run on that man's defense, on Al Bruno, and they said they were going to run at it early and see if they could continue it. That was the strategy on the part of the Argos, and Grover Covington is offside. At least he was across the line of scrimmage, but it could be a procedure call against number 67, Chris Schultz. Yeah, both Chris Schultz and Dan Farone both moved, and I think you're going to get procedure, and that draws them offside. But you're talking about this no huddle offense, Don. It's not that hurry up offense. Take a they want to line up. Corner number 66. They want to line up in a formation. Then they'll call the plays by the way Hamilton's defense lines up against it. It won't save a lot of time. We'll take a look at that in a little bit to see how much time it saves out of that 20 seconds. First and 15 back at the 36. The Ticats showing blitz and Dan Sellers was across the line of scrimmage. Now is this an offside call or is it another procedure violation? Yeah, I think it's going to see the, the defense can move. The offensive lineman cannot move till the ball is snapped. The defense can jump across and get back and as long as he's out of the neutral zone and doesn't touch anybody, but Proomster moves. Procedure. Make a procedure. 64 Toronto. First down to two. They called Bob Skemp that time, but they could also finger Kevin Proomster. So it's first and 20 as they're backed up to the 41. Donegan gets away from the initial pressure, but Grover Covington reached back and hauled him down. The CFL's all-time sack leader, Grover Covington, gets another. But Dunnigan was looking downfield. 
but the corner Gary Wilkerson had good coverage and then he was getting help from Rockford so Dunnigan had to pull it down and then that man Grover Covington's there as he has been for quite a few years 6'3 252 pounds he played his college football at Johnson C Smith Initially came into the CFL with Montreal and to Hamilton in 81. And the injured player is Bob Skemp. And he is having an eye looked at. And that's one of the dangers. Now, is it a contact lens problem? Or did someone get a finger in the eye? I think they're looking for it down there. Like Daryl Smith was laying on his stomach looking on the ground. Looking for that contact lens. He's a product of junior football in this country. He played with the Richmond Raiders, then the University of British Columbia. He was with Montreal and became available through the dispersal draft. Al Bruno fully expected the Toronto Argonauts to run at his right, D, let's Hamilton go tie caps. And Zuger in talking about a comment Mike McCarthy, now the general manager of the Toronto Argonauts, made about how he built this team, responded with this reply. Well, in most cases, an entire organization is needed to build a club. Tremaine Johnson can't catch up with him. That could be an interesting matchup if they go man-to-man -man coverage as Lance Shields on Tremaine Johnson. Johnson coming in with the experience in the National Football League but none here. This is his first start, and he's going against a pretty good cornerback in Lance Shields. So the Argo drive that was moving so impressively stalls, and they will attempt a field goal. And this will be a kick of 48 yards for Lance Chomick. It is certainly within his range. It's good. And the Toronto Argonauts enjoy a 3-0 lead with 11.02 remaining in the opening quarter. Don Matthews told us yesterday one of the objectives of the Argos coming into this ball game was to sustain some drives and make some first downs. Well, they did just that putting together a series of nine plays on their first possession and consuming 3.58 on the clock. But he would have much preferred to see the ball carried into the end zone rather than call upon Lance Chomick to kick for three. Now, what stopped that drive was penalties. Those two procedure calls put you back and make it first down at 20, and they just weren't able to recover from that. Penalties usually affect your offense. But it just kills your drive, and that's what it did to that one. And now with the Toronto Argonauts, you're going to see this unusual formation for the kickoff. They all line up behind Lance Chomick. He signals it. And they squib it along the ground. Ed Gadavekas returns it to the 53-yard line. So the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Mike Kerrigan, starts his first offensive series with excellent field position. Right at midfield. We talk about Kerrigan so much. He hasn't been able to finish his drives. You saw those six interceptions, and a lot of them have come when they get down in scoring position. That's what he has to overcome. Of course, one of those interceptions cost the Ticats a victory in their season opener back in July 12th at Taylor Field in Regina. Derek McAdoo with a gain of nine. He's stopped by linebacker Daryl Ford. While we talk about their offensive keys, we've already mentioned Mike Kerrigan. Earl Winfield, we talked about in the opening, you need a big game. But Derek McAdoo tonight is going to get a lot of work. Talking to the coaches yesterday in our meeting with them, they talked about they felt they could run right at the center of this Toronto defense. And then first play, that's where McAdoo goes. Second and one. And it's McAdoo again. He should have the first down. His forward progress carried close to the 45-yard line before he was driven back by Chris Gaines and Rodney Harding. Defensively, Reggie Pleasant's going to have a tough time tonight. They got a wide receiver named Walter Murray. He's pretty good. Chris Gaines, the middle linebacker. If they're going to run, we talk about the middle. That's where you're going to find Gaines. And James Parker, we're going to find out if he can get to that quarterback. He's a veteran of this club, and they expect some leadership from him, and he can give a lot of leadership by sacking quarterbacks. Interesting the different comments yesterday from the opposing coaches as we 
look at Derry, Derek McAdoo being helped off the field. The Hamilton Ticats feel that Parker is not penetrating like he used to. Doesn't seem they feel that he can catch people from behind the way he used to. But the Toronto Argonauts' Don Matthews told us that Parker's playing well. He said this was a blitzing league three years ago when Parker was having his success. Now teams are getting rid of the ball quicker, and you have to play a little different type of defense, and Parker's doing that. I think that's right. Uh, it is. They're getting rid of the ball in a hurry now. Traymeyer is in for McAdoo. The pass aimed in Winfield's direction. It will be second and ten, Hamilton. They're talking about taking Earl Winfield out of the Hamilton offense. As we mentioned in the opening, this is the guy they look to for the big plays. And, I mean, the Argonauts know that. They've got to take him away from there. That's why Murray has got to come through for him tonight on the other side. Six foot three, an excellent deep threat. The Argos believe they have to stop Hamilton from going to the wide up. They really don't feel that the Ticats can beat them with their slot down. That's right. If you take Murray and Winfield away, they set Richard Estelle down tonight. So they've got Lee Knight, and DiPietro inside. So they've got to try it. You see the good coverage by Ed Berry on Winfield. The ball floated on Kerrigan. Kerrigan's got to get back and let it go. And when he gets, he's a rhythm thrower, and we say it every game, you've got to disrupt his rhythm. Paul Osbaldiston is going to attempt a 53-yard field goal. He's got the distance and the accuracy. So with 8.46 remaining in the opening quarter, the game is tied at three. Well, Hamilton was celebrating, thinking they had tied the game. So did we, but there was an offside call against the Ticats. So that eliminates the field goal. And with the penalty against the Ticats, Paul Osbaldiston now retreats to the 39-yard line where he will attempt a field goal. Actually, it was a legal substitution on the part of the Ticats. Well, when that referee on the side puts those arms up, you're not allowed to go in. And if you do, it costs you. And the, the flag would be way on the sidelines where no one saw it. That's why the tight cats got all all happy. But I'll tell you, Baldwin really hit it and went through with about 15 yards to spare. Well, just as they were lining up, Richard Nurse went running off the field, and that was the reason for the penalty flag. But the tight cats were celebrating, thinking they had tied the ball game. So now it's a third down punt by Osbaldiston. A good kick. It is taken by Rivers, and he is stopped at the 21-yard line. Osbaldiston's spot is taken by Lorenzo Rivers. Paul Osbaldiston, who established a league record for scoring last season in the CFL. He had 233 points. Okay, we're going to look at the, the huddle and no huddle. This time the Argonauts are in the huddle. The clock starts when the referee blows his whistle and walks away. You have 20 seconds to get the play off. We're going to see how much time they use in the huddle and how much time they use from a no huddle. See if it's saving any time. Kevin Smelly picks up about a yard. Using a very basic offense. That's the old split P dive handoff, and then Dunnigan's going to run an option off that before long. We're going to see that. Now this time, the referee will leave the football, but there's an injured player, so we won't be able to accurately time the no huddle reaction because the Argos will have the opportunity to huddle up. But, Ron, it's not a fire offense. That's right. Where they go many times on first sound. Yeah, this is a planned maneuver by the Toronto coaching staff. They want to already be out on their alignment. They can change formation, and then when they change the formation, they want to see the defense's adjustment to it, and then they'll call the play. So it's not to try to save time as much as to read the defense on the run. Tim Lorenz, the number two draft choice in 1988, playing that defensive tackle position for the Ticats. Played junior hockey with the Portland Winterhawks, 1982 to 84, was a draft choice of Vancouver in 1983. How would you like to uh, have him bearing down on you at 6'2", 242 pounds? I want him on my side. <laughs> I, I don't want, I don't want him bearing down on me. I bet he could get in the corner pretty well, couldn't he? He might control the boards. Right now, however, there is concern with the state of health of Tim Lorenz. I think we might see. 
number of ball players out there tonight winded, and I think this might be the case with Lorenz, fortunately, or is it his right knee? Well, they're going to help him off. We'll see how he's walking when he goes off. He's not putting too much weight on it right now. That's not a good sign. No, it isn't. When they began to help him up. I thought perhaps he had been winded, but he is not putting any weight on that left knee. He's a tough, tough individual and loves to play. He's got to play at the same speed all the time. He goes 100%, and even in practice, he's like that. And you don't want to lose those type because they're, it rubs off on the other team. Mark Napierkowski takes his spot at defensive tackle. Smelly picked up two yards on that last play. It's second and eight. So Dunnigan on that occasion was able to huddle up his offensive troops. Smelly is getting a lot of work. Running hard, but stopped short of a first down at the 29 by Daryl Patterson and Grover Covington. That's a counter play. They pulled Chris Schultz and Dan Perone. You start, a counter means you start to the wide side of the field, then you pull your lineman and give the ball and come back away from it. Try to get that defense flowing. You see Ryan Hansen blocking. Now, Smelly's supposed to hit up inside to the other side of the field, but as any good back will tell you, you run to daylight. You make the cut wherever you think you can gain yardage. And he got pretty close to the first down. He about oh, a little yard and a half away. On third down in the yard, the Argos are going after it. The pitch to Smelly. I don't know. It'll be close. I don't. It's going to be. It comes down to the spot. It's, it's that simple because he needed to get fully one yard across the 30-yard line, and I don't know if he made it. Gadavakis came over to make the tackle. Made it. They put it just on the other side of the line, which means he would make it. He had to get across that little white line. Smelly again, but this time he isn't going anywhere. Gustafelos and Daryl Patterson were there. So was the other linebacker, Frank Robinson. He's an interesting story. He played out his option last season. Many thought that he was finished with football, but this past week, after overtures were made by Toronto, Hamilton contacted Robinson as well and persuaded him to come back and play. Daryl Smith, the intended receiver, he was overthrown as he was being covered by Sonny Gordon, the left side halfback. Now you saw in that particular time, our time up in the corner, they only used about four seconds to get that play off. So they had already called that. He couldn't have called the play to both sides and then walk up and get it off that fast. So they must have called two plays in the huddle that time. This time, the Argos send out the punting unit. Wally Zatilny is the lone man back to accept this third down kick from Glenn Harper. Zatilny waits for it at the 40. Zatilny attempted to put a move on those downfield tacklers, but he couldn't escape. Bruce Elliott, 555, remains in the quarter. Last night, a last play field goal by Luth Saglia gave BC a 24-23 win over Winnipeg. It's the first loss of the year for the Blue Bombers. Ottawa, of course, winning its first on Thursday night in that 50-46 shootout at Lansdowne Park. The Argos looking for their first win. Calgary, the lone unbeaten team in the CFL, romping to an easy win last night over the Grey Cup champion Saskatchewan Rough Riders. They lead the Edmonton Eskimos by a single point in the West. Well, I was impressed with the Sam Peters last night. Danny Barrett played just about a perfect football game, and they did them everything right. The other thing I'd like to say is I've been wanting to see Danny McManus throw a football for about three years. I finally got to, he can <laughs> throw it. That's what I wanted to see. He threw two late touchdown passes for Winnipeg, but it wasn't enough. Earl Winfield could not hang on. Reggie Pleasant was on top of him. Scott? 
Don, the first quarter of this game has cost the Ticats starting nose tackle Tim Lorenz. Uh, you saw the, the incident in which he hurt his knee, and in fact the diagnosis now is a strained ligament. He may require arthroscopic surgery, and he will almost certainly have it placed in a cast. It's at least a game, perhaps two, maybe even more. That's not good news for Tim Lorenz and the Hamilton Ticat. Mark Napierkowski will be running from his defensive tackle position or his nose guard, nose guard position, whichever you prefer. Pleasant intercept. And Pleasant was tripped up by Lee Knight at the 25-yard line. We get a look at this on the replay, Don. No. This is one of the times that a quarterback makes a big, big mistake. He threw that ball into coverage. Count the number of white jerseys around the football. I count five. Over top of Di Pietro's head, right into the arms of Reggie Pleasant. Reggie Pleasant sitting in that zone, just starts the other way, picks up some blockers, and he's got great field position for the Argonauts to start. Great effort by Lee Knight. He was the player knocked down as Pleasant went up and made the interception. But Knight got back into the play to get upfield and make the tackle. Now the Argos trying to cash in. Jeff Boyd was the target. It's intercepted. Wilkerson intercepts in the end zone. So very quickly, the Ticats get the football back. Jeff Boyd goes down the field. He's going to run a curl and then go. He turns to the inside to try to freeze Wilkerson and then tries to run by him. But Wilkerson is step for step with him. That's a heck of a catch. He put out his arms, looked over his shoulder, and the ball's in it. Excellent coverage by Wilkerson. In the season opener, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders attempted to test the rookie cornerback. He came up with an interception. And the Toronto Argonauts try and test him with the experienced Jeff Boyd. And he makes the theft in the end zone. So the Ticats get the football back. First and 10 from the 25-yard line. On both his interceptions, and he got to the end zone. One for a touchdown and one to prevent a touchdown. Derek McAdoo. Surrounded by white jerseys, there's a penalty flag on the play. The ball is pitched out to Lee Knight or to uh, Rocky Di Pietro. I think we're going to get a holding call on Rocky Di Pietro. I think I'll be surprised if that's not what's called. Them. Carl Brazley was up in there in a hurry to force that play. I don't think McAdoo was flipping that ball out. I think it was actually punched right out of his arms into the hands of Rocky Di Pietro. Holding Hamilton number 32. First down repeated. Well, same, same two numbers, wrong order. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, Sam Lokes. He's the lead blocker on a toss. His job is to block the first person outside the tackle. In that case, it would be linebacker Don Moan, and that's who he was caught holding. Back to the 15-yard line. It is first and 20 now for Hamilton. Berrigan has yet to complete a pass. Finally gets one to Winfield out of the 20 six-yard line. I think Ed Berry will be very content on first down and 20 to give Winfield an 8 or 10 or 12-yard gain on and out. What he doesn't want to do is let him get deep. Well, this is something the Argos will do during the course of the game. Mix up their coverages and trying to defend against those wideouts. Everybody thinks the Argonauts play man 80, 90 percent. Talking to them yesterday, they don't play it that much. They mix in the zone to try to confuse quarterbacks. This time, Winfield comes wide to the left. That's the direction Farragut looks, but he can't find him. The ball is loose. The Argos should get a touchdown. They do. Don Moon. Well, they had great pressure on Kerrigan. You saw him put the ball up the throw, and he had to pull it down, and then the pocket collapsed. All right, we're going to watch him all the way. Now, he looks, comes this way. He goes to throw it. Now, has to pull it down, and now you see he's in trouble. You see Harding, he gets outside of Parker, but they're still coming. Harold Holman hits him and caused the fumble, and Don Moan just makes an easy six points. Nobody around there. Harold Holman, who had that outstanding season a few years back with Calgary in the sack department, is the man who made the contact with Kerrigan, and Don Moan scooped up that loose football to score the touchdown. 3.30 is the time remaining in this opening quarter, and now the point after by Lance Tomic, and the Toronto Argonauts enjoy a 10-0 lead. That right there, Don, that play was an example of what Coach Matthews told us yesterday want to do. Disrupt Mike Kerrigan's rhythm. You see him back there to throw. He stepped, and he's going to let it go. He had to pull it down, and we saw he's not the scrambler that, you know, 
that you'd expect somebody to be like a Damon Allen or somebody like that. He can't scramble, and he got himself in trouble. Well, it was Todd Dillon last week against the Ottawa Rough Riders who came off the bench and replaced Kerrigan and helped lead the Thai Cats to victory. There were many people in Hamilton who thought that perhaps Dillon deserved a starting assignment in tonight's game, but the Thai Cats came back with Kerrigan. How long do you think Bruno will stay with Kerrigan if he doesn't start moving the team? I think he's got to go a while. I, I would say he's going to go not too long because Dylan's warming up. <laughs> I, I thought he'd go at least the first half. That's one I, way of retracing your step. Yeah, I thought he'd go at least a half, and I'll tell you why. Kerrigan, once he gets on a roll, he, can, he goes well. But the big thing is he should start and Dylan should relieve because Dylan moves around well. He can get out of trouble, and when you're in trouble, you want a guy that can cause things to happen. But I didn't think he'd be up warming up this fast. Is that, as an old quarterback, what you call reading in mid-statement? <laughs> yeah, I look up and see him throwing the ball. The short kickoff, and it's knocked out of bounds. Lee Knight, I think, was the man who jumped up and managed to knock it out of bounds. Well, that's a great job by Lee Knight, because there was a lot of Argonauts that knew that short kick was coming, but not very many Tiger Cats. He just out-jumped them, and all you have to do is tip it out of bounds. It didn't take long, did it? <laughs> And the fans at Ivor Wynn react to the change in quarterback as Todd Dillon takes over from Mike Carrigan with 321 remaining in the opening quarter at the Ticats trailing by 10. He completes the first pass to Walter Murray for a first down. Well, yeah. You, you, you got to watch Walter Murray play. I know Wally Zatillon usually plays that wide out, but they wanted him in the game because this gives them Winfield and Murray. But Murray is six foot three, and he can go up after the football. And Reggie Pleasant is five nine. Anytime there's a jump ball situation, he's going to win it. He's got great speed, excellent moves, and a nice big target to throw at. He's out of the University of Hawaii. He was acquired by the Thai Cats in June in a deal with the Edmonton Eskimos. Derek McAdoo has another first down. the back of that version of the Statue of Liberty where the quarterback shows pass and it hands off to McAdoo and McAdoo just follows Sam Louch. All right, Dylan pumps it, now hands off. Now he runs anywhere he wants. You see good blocking and he steps right through it. No chance for Daryl Ford to make the tackle and then a downfield. First and 10, Hamilton, the ball is at the Toronto 23. Pass is complete for another first down. This time it's Lee Knight taking it out of bounds. That's an excellent call, an excellent execution by Dillon. The execution is the key right here. He gets outside clean because he made such a good fake. The defensive end got trapped inside, and then bang. Crossing receiver, no problem. Finds Lee Knight coming across the field, and that's where he should be, right in vision of the quarterback. First and goal, Hamilton from the eight-yard line. Winfield lines up wide right. The pitch goes to McAdoo. He gets away from Braysbury. He'll score. Well, Mike Kerrigan couldn't do it, but Todd Dillon certainly did with help from Derek McAdoo. It's about as fast as you can do it. Just a toss. Just look at the, when Brazley missed the tackle inside and you allow a back with McAdoo's speed and ability at 205 pounds, run straight ahead. A defensive back is not going to stop him from getting into the end zone. Paul Osbaldiston attempting the point after. And the Hamilton Tiger Cats draw within three of the Argos with two minutes remaining in the opening quarter. Well, that quarterbacking change certainly play, paid instant dividends for the Ticats. Well, it sure did. Four plays. Why not? It's all it took. Good crowd on hand tonight at Iverwin Stadium, despite the fact that the blackout in Southern Ontario for this game has been lifted. And wherever you're looking in on the full CBC network tonight, we hope you're enjoying the action. Nice summer evening like tonight. It's great to be at the ballpark. A lot of excitement here. Good rivalry. Toronto Hamilton get together. You always have a few fireworks. A pass to Murray. Pass to Knight. Two runs, and it's over. 
Well, the rivalry between these two teams, believe it or not, dates back to October 11th, 1873. And no, neither Ron Lancaster or I were around for that one. Even Art Darch wasn't in the league. <laughs> Lorenzo Rivers ran into one of his own men, Daryl Ford, up at the 40-yard line. He bounced off him, but into the arms of Dan Sellers. That was a 29-yard run back after that 62-yard kickoff. 154 remaining in the opening quarter. The Argos lead by three. Dunnigan, seven interceptions last week. One so far tonight, he now has a league leading 11 for the season. There's the hit screen to Maine Johnson out to the 49-yard line. Johnson only arrived in the Argo camp on Monday. They really weren't expecting him to be in the lineup for tonight's game, but he impressed the coaching staff with his work during the week. And the graduate of the USFL and National Football League is playing. Sonny Gordon came over to make the tackle on Kevin Smelly, and he will be a yard and a half shy of a first down. Got good effort from Frank Robinson, number 43, and Rod Skillman, 59. They got the penetration and it didn't allow him outside, and when he cut back in, there was nowhere to go. The Argos this time send out the punting unit. Glenn Harper confers briefly with Coach Don Matthews before heading onto the field. Glenn Harper led the CFL in average punts in 1987, kicking for a 42.8 yard average with Calgary. Signed with the Toronto as a free agent. Wally Zatilny takes it on the dead run. He draws a penalty flag, attempting to utilize his speed, and he almost burst through. When you see that ball go up and start to die like that, it doesn't turn over, and a guy like Zatilny catches it on the run. He doesn't need much room. If he gets the, the little bit of a seam, he'd be gone. That was only a 29-yard kick, an 11-yard run back by Zatilny. No yards. Toronto number 35. No yards. First down, Hamilton. Wally Zatilny disappointed that he was taken off the starting roster for this ball game, but he'll make his contribution on special teams. Well, you know, not very many guys like to sit on the bench. Wally has been a starter. He doesn't like to sit over there. If he does, then he's probably not good enough to play. Anybody that's happy on the bench, you got to wonder about him. Winfield. He gave Carl Brazley all he could handle and in the process picked up a first down. Just what, what they refer to as a stop pattern. Just come off the ball. If the defensive back is back like he is here, stop, catch the football. Brazley comes out, tries to jump on him, which he does, but he can't bring him down. Winfield is having an outstanding season for the Ticats. He has already scored four touchdowns. This is only his third game. Movement at the line of scrimmage. Mike Dirks moved. Now, is it a procedure or an offside call? I think all these things have to go against the offense. You know, I, I, unless the defensive guy comes off and touches you, but anything that's questionable. League of Procedure, the Hamilton number 68, Tiger first down, repeat it. And when Mike Dirks moves, he moves. I mean, yep. there's, there's movement of the ground below him at 6'5", 290 pounds. And you know, he may not be 290 this year. Last year, <laughs> he wasn't 290, but he's the other way. This year, he came in, I thought it was his brother. I mean, he really lost a lot of weight. He's in great shape this year. Hand off to McAdoo. Darrell Ford, the linebacker, came across to make the tackle. And that is also the end of the opening quarter with the Toronto Argonauts holding a three-point lead. Dave Van Bellingham has devised this unique means of saying hello to his mother. I wonder if he has high dad on the other shoe. Not likely. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way, does it? Low pass, but the catch is made short of a first down by Derek McAdoo. 
first play of the second quarter and this is what happened in the opening quarter the tie cats despite the fact they're trailing by three had six first downs and they had more net yards than the Toronto Argonauts the Argo touchdown you'll recall the result of a fumble recovery by Don Moan while the tie cats were able to put together a drive under the direction of Todd Dillon for their major score. Paul Osbaldiston has evolved from a three step punter into a two step kicker and it has improved his effectiveness. Penalty flag on the play. And there's also an injured tie cat, Ernie Schremeyer, is down as we have a skirmish going on. Those players involved. In that tackle, Al Bruno out on the field trying to separate the troops. There's a penalty flag on the run back. But so far, we have had no signal from referee Ken Lazarus. Liga block, Toronto number seven, first down. The illegal block against Carl Drazley. You see Stephen Jordan, Reggie Pleasant comes up, tries to block the punt. Now, this is where the altercation starts. Reggie Pleasant trying to block him. Stephen Jordan doesn't like it. They got him double teamed over there pretty well with Ed Berry. That's what all the ruckus was over about over on the other side of the field. Pleasant and Barry involved with Stefan Jordan. And now Schremeyer being assisted off by Ray Jones. Jeff Boyd makes the catch. The Argos have a first down at the 20-yard line. Well, that was a well-thrown football, and it had to be. Wilkerson was not very far away from Jeff Boyd as he run that turn in or curl pattern. One step, but that's all it took, and Dunnigan put it right on the mark. The hit screen. Tremaine Johnson gets it out to the 29-yard line, close to another first down. One of the problems the Argos had with their wideouts in their first two games is that they were lining up too far out. Now, the coaching staff has been coming back closer to the line so they can hear the call. See, right here we get a good example of what we talked about. The second guy at the top of the screen is wide receiver Jeff Ford. They changed the formation to a stack, and they switched it at the line. It didn't work. The ball was thrown poorly. It was intended for Kevin Smelly. They have a number of different names for those formations. The ninja formation, the samurai formation. And if they don't work, he's got a, lo a lot of other names for them. <laughs> <laughs> Third and one. Don Matthews sends out the punting unit with 13-18 remaining in this second quarter. bounces away from Zatilny and goes out of bounds. An excellent kick by Harper at the 34-yard line. And that's where the tie caps will scrimmage when we return. Veteran Argo defensive back Carl Brazley joins us on Live at the Half here at Iverwind to speak on behalf of the defense, which has been taking a beating the league over this season. The Bombers lost last night in B.C., but still in first place in the East Division. We'll go live to Winnipeg to talk to head coach Mike Riley. And we'll preview the Prince of Wales stakes from Fort Erie, which we'll have tomorrow for you on Sports Weekend. On Carl Brazley, a much-traveled defensive back, played with Montreal in 80-81, Ottawa in 81-82. He's with Toronto from 83 through 86 in the NFL with San Diego and Minnesota in 87, and then came back to join the Argos for 12 games in 1988. But he is one of the top defensive backs in the league. Well, he's played the corner. 
He's played where he is now at halfback. They started the season with the plan to put him in the middle at the safety or rover position because of his experience. But they got this guy, John Field, that runs about 4-3, and they moved Brazley to where he can force the run and help out there. Todd Dillon is still perfect in the passing department, and Derek McAdoo has a first down up to midfield. That's a good read by the quarterback, by Todd Dillon. When McAdoo starts to the flat, Darrell Ford, the linebacker, has to cover him. He cannot run with him. He's not fast enough. And you see when he catches the ball, look where Darrell Ford is in the relationship. He's trailing him by two or three steps. You can't help but gain yards when that happens. Since replacing Mike Kerrigan, Todd Dillon is now five for five. Darrell Ford has switched linebacking positions as the result of the injury last week to Glenn Cobb. He's moved to the other side. And this time it's intercepted, picked off by Don Wilson, and he'll go all the way. Unless McAdoo can get him, which he does. It's a great effort by McAdoo to stop the touchdown, but the reason for the interception, Dylan looked at a backside. Walter Murray started to come in, and when Dylan cocked his arm, Murray went deep and it hit Wilson right in the numbers, and he brings it back 64 yards. Maybe we'll get a good look at it. You're right here, it hits him right in the numbers, and you see Murray. Murray tried to go around him. And boy, that's a quarterback, that's nothing you can do about that. You hit him right between the two and the zero. Well, the effort by McAdoo to save the touchdown, quite an effort. Well, there were a lot of people who were surprised when he became available. He was an All-Canadian with the Edmonton Eskimos, signed as a free agent by the Argos. And with his interception return, taking it down to the two, Matt Dunnigan takes it in for the Toronto touchdown. Dunnigan celebrates by throwing the football up into the stands. Now, if this were baseball in Wrigley Field in Chicago, they'd throw it, they'd throw it back. That's right. <laughs> the Cubs fans don't like those home runs by opposing batters. I'll guarantee you that ball's not coming back. I can't believe he threw it that far. He threw it a long way up into section five. Another injured tie cap. It appears to be Daryl Patterson, the linebacker. Dunning in that time from the no-huddle offense set his formation and changed it and the tight cats had to send a lot of people out of the middle he just took it and ran straight ahead for the touchdown good job of blocking up front by his center John Copland and Bob Skimp the right guard he went right between them right into the end zone Darrell Patterson and Frank Robinson two of the Hamilton tie cap linebackers who once played with Winnipeg still retain their Winnipeg connection both live there in the offseason Todd Dillon, quick on his first five pass attempts. His sixth was also completed, but to the wrong color uniform as it was returned 64 yards by Don Wilson. The guy he's talking to in a white jersey right there is Todd Santos, their third quarterback who, who is here on the practice roster. He set NCAA passing records. He, he can throw the football too. Lance Chomick adds the point after for a 10-point Toronto lead with 12.02 remaining in the half. Oh, it's interesting that when Matt Dunnigan was traded to the Toronto Argonauts, John Congemi was wearing uniform number 16. But with the arrival of Dunnigan, Congemi is now wearing 15. Dunnigan wearing his familiar number 16 jersey. Well, that was a nice job of blocking John Coughlin on the nose. And you saw Bob Scamp number 64. He just comes out of there, checks the, the nose to see if he's coming in his way. And he does it. He goes right out and blocks Daryl Patterson. Makes it easier for Dunnigan to follow him into the end zone. You're right. They, I, I thought it was a little strange, but then I remembered it was Dunnigan wearing 16. Some, uh, Don Jemmy's going to have to give it up. <laughs> Don Matthews had an interesting comment about Matt Dunnigan last week when he threw those seven interceptions. He said after he threw the sixth, a lot of people wondered if he would get an opportunity to throw a seventh. He said he's my number one quarterback. That's right. You've got to give him a chance. Wally Zatilne burst up the middle to the 52-yard line and the feet taken out from under him by Darrell Ford. Almost broken. He had been through where the heavy going was. Got 26 yards in that return, but he was within a step of maybe going a distance. Al Bruno started Mike Kerrigan and then switched in the opening quarter to Todd Dillon. 
And Dillon continues directing the attack for the Ticat. 11.50 is the time left in this first half. 17-7, Toronto lead. Swing pass to Derek McAdoo, stopped at midfield, a gain of four. It will be second and six. Veteran linebacker Don Moan, who scored the Argos' first touchdown, was over there to make the tackle. It's like, a, what do you call a swing screen or whatever you want to do, and McAdoo just starts in the backfield, and on the snap of the ball, swings to the wide side or to, you know, away from the formation. Just throw him the ball, try to get him some blocking. he got five yards. It's just like a running play. Second down. This one is also intercepted. It was intended for Murray. And it is Carl Brasley, whom we will hear from at halftime with the theft directly in front of the Hamilton bench. You know, we talked about the Argos always playing man coverage. Not this time. They go to the zone. You see the linebacker there, but what's Brasley? Just steps right in front. Pleasant's playing up close in the flat. Brazley's got deep outside. Looked like Murray was open, but he wasn't. Brazley stepped right in front. That's experience for you. This is the 90th game as an Argo for Carl Brazley. And the interception gives Toronto a first down at the 34. Pass complete to Murray and carries it out to the 47-yard line. Well, that's a nice read by Dunning and three receivers to the wide side of the field. The inside man, in this case, Andrew Murray, is uncovered. So he just takes the ball, just dumps it to him, and lets him run. He likes Murray. Murray's 6'2", 200 pounds. They played together in BC. He knows him. This time he'll go for Johnson. Good catch. But he was unable to hang on to the football. But they're going to rule that he had the ball in possession. It was knocked away from him and then went out of bounds. But there are penalty flags at the midfield strike. A little bit of a stop-and-go pattern. Jermaine Johnson comes off the ball, and just as he stopped, Dunnigan pumped it at him like he was going to throw it. That brought Wilkerson up, and he went right in behind him, and he had to grab him as he went by. That's what the flag was for, but it was a great catch. Watch it. Watch the catch. Reach out the hand on the fingertip. Four pass interference. Dunnigan number 20. He climbs. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Jermaine Johnson played with Chicago and Arizona in the United States Football League, Buffalo, San Francisco, and San Diego in the NFL. He's a graduate of Grambling. He played for legendary Eddie Robinson at Grambling. Well, he's put out a lot of good athletes at that school. Oh, they were always a powerhouse. They've been a powerhouse for as long as I can remember. Jim Rockford, the injured ball player, that brings Bobby Donson into the safety position. Bobby Donson, 5'10", or 5'11", they say, 210 pounds, and he's built like a linebacker, a rookie out of Illinois, can play all positions. He can play the corner, halfback, middle safety and also if he had to go to weak side linebacker he is very very strong first and ten good fake by Dunnigan but didn't fool too many of the defensive linemen of the Hamilton Tiger Cats they started out running the football and they've got away from it a little bit they had some success running it I thought maybe they may come back to it. That's a little different look. That's a belly play. It wasn't that straight dive that Smelly had success with earlier. Dunnigan sets to throw. He completes it to Jeff Boyd for another first down at the 20 of the Hamilton Ticats. It's a well-thrown football. What Dunnigan looks at is he looks to his right. When Jeff Boyd runs his curl, he looks at the linebacker in front of him. You'll see the receiver go down the field. The pressure comes. Get the, they grab him late. Sellers grabs him late. But that ball is gone and a completion. So you, you don't mind taking that hit. First and ten, Argos. They are at the 20-yard line. Dunnigan for Smith. Touchdown. Pretty good coverage by Lance Shield, but a heck of a throw by Dunnigan and even a better reception. I'm sorry, Sonny Gordon. Excellent coverage, but a better reception by Daryl Smith. You know, he came into the game tonight with about 15 receptions and two touchdowns. That was a great, great catch right there. Get a good look at it. The ball in the air. Watch the coverage Sonny Gordon has on him. Got him well, but he misses the ball. When you miss it, a good receiver with good concentration scores a touchdown. Smith had been the busiest of Argo receivers coming into the game, as Ron pointed out, with 15 receptions. He hauls in that Dunnigan throw for the major score, and Lance Chomick adds the point after as the Toronto Argonauts lead this football game with 9.26 remaining in the half. <laughs> Dick
Daryl Smith has been the leading receiver for the Argos for the past three years. He continues to be their number one man. And this is why. Watch the concentration. Dunnigan sprints left, looks to the backside, knows he'll get single coverage. Watch the concentration. Sonny Gordon dives in front, misses the football. Smith pulls it right into his hand. When you cut in front, you take the chance. This time he lost. 24-7, the Toronto Argonauts lead the Hamilton Tie Cats. The Argos looking for their first win of the season, and it didn't take long for Toronto to move those 77 yards. Just a minute and 42 seconds. This is Peter Buchanan on the kickoff return. He brings it up to the 51-yard line. With each series, the Tie Cats have had good field position. They've had excellent field position, always out between the 50 and 55-yard line. That's about all you can ask. But they got to not turn that football over. And the first two touchdowns that the Argos got was one when Moen walks in, and the other is a two-yard run by Dunnigan. At that time, they moved it down the field. After replacing Kerrigan, Dillon smartly put together a five-play drive that resulted in a McAdoo touchdown. Since then, he has thrown two interceptions. McAdoo carries. Winfield gives him a block. Lee Knight tries to help out. And McAdoo will be very close to the first down. Ed Berry came over to make the tackle. Well, this is the play yesterday when we were talking to the coaches about what they would think they can run. This is the counter, what they call misdirection. Here they come, number 51, around the corner, leading it is Dave Richardson, the offensive lineman. And Coach Faragelli told us about it in Ottawa the other day that he didn't want to lose, but he's starting now for Hamilton. He's leading that ball carrier around the end. It is a first down from the 49. Dillon almost intercepted again by Don Wilson. Well, if he got that one, he'd have been gone again because he really played that well. He threw it outside to Murray. Whenever that wide receiver goes down the field and hooks to the inside, when he's on the inside like that, if that ball's thrown, it's not that far for that inside halfback, in this case, Wilson. Watch him. Steps right in front. You short every time you step to the inside, it cuts down five yards of throwing lane for the quarterback. Well, the Argo defensive game plan coming in was to concentrate on the wideouts. This time, Murray is hit by Pleasant. The ball is loose, but the whistle had gone. Well, that's a heck of a hit by Pleasant. Five foot nine, 170 pounds. Like we said, they'll give him the out, but when Murray caught the ball and turned, Pleasant was right there to drill him. So far, the Hamilton passing scheme has been basically a plan to the wide up. Yeah, and most of the time to Murray, Toronto came in wanting to nullify and take the, uh, Earl Winfield away from him, force him to go to Murray. They try and go inside. It's incomplete. Rocky D. Pietro, the CFL's all-time leading receiver, was the target. Zatilny came in the game that time for for Murray at the wide out position went right down the field and no one even looked at him. He's standing down the end zone up and up and down. He was open. Graisley and Field, the halfback and safety, were defending against Di Pietro. Second and ten. They'll get another first down as Winfield comes back to make the catch at the 27. Took one, that ball in front of Ed Berry. One-on-one -on -one coverage. It's you and Ed Berry. Winfield goes down, turns to the inside, and then comes back to the quarterback. Watch with the ball in the air. Watch Winfield coming back to the quarterback. Get the separation, then take the hit, but you got the first down. Winfield can't hang on. Stripped of the football by Ed Berry. i tell you what I like there was Todd Dillon looked to his left to try to freeze the safety man, John Field come back and threw that post and threw it perfectly only a good play by Barry stopped the touchdown there's also a penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage it would appear to be a holding call against the Ticats you see the safety man at the top can't get over there to help but that is a good defensive play by Ed Barry the receiver, when he goes out and gets those hands on the ball, he must pull it to his chest in a hurry, or Ed Berry, a defensive back with that ability, will go up and knock it out of your hands. So Ed Berry will have to go out for three plays. That means 
Dave Van Bellingham will come in as his replacement. He's from the University of Calgary. He'll move into the safety position. Wilson will go to the corner, and John Field will move into that halfback spot. Again, we point out the rule change this year in the CFL. An injured player must stay out for a minimum three plays. In the past, a player could go out for one and then return. That's right. Now, what that was designed to do is they felt that a lot of times late in the half and so on, teams were cheating. And no, I, I can't, can't believe, believe that. <laughs> that they would do that. A guy would fake an injury to get the clock stopped to allow him to get the play in the game and so on. So what they've done is if you get hurt, you go out and stay out three plays. Brazley looks like he's going to the corner. Fields at halfback on his side. I might be tempted to put Winfield out and test him. Well, See Winfield what is do. coming out to his right. He's lined up against Brazley, if that means anything. It's first and 20, quickly inside to McAdoo, and he stopped at the 30-yard line. He got back eight of the yards they had lost on the penalty. Same thing we saw Dunnigan do a minute ago. You get those receivers out, and if no one covers them, just stand up and throw it to them. McAdoo's hurting a little bit. Player of the tie cat can ill afford to lose. He makes such a contribution both as a runner and as a pass receiver. And, you know, he's a pretty good kick returner, too. We saw him in, I think it was in Saskatchewan, return a kickoff about 80 yards. 6.24 is the time remaining in the first half. Hey! Well, I'm sure you have no problems recognizing Ron Lancaster. Our old-time football fans might remember Art Darch from his years with the Hamilton Ticats and the Toronto Argonauts, and he has been our spotter on Eastern Games for a number of years. Doing an excellent job again tonight, as always. Derek McAdoo goes out of the ball game. That means that Sam Lutz and Ernie Schremeyer are in there in the running back position. I think they're still one short. Di Pietro, I'm anxious to see what they did do here. Well, the fans at Ivor win tonight were enjoying things early, but they're not quite as excited over the developments in this second quarter that have seen the Argos take a 24-7 lead. And Todd Dillon can't escape Darrell Ford. So that prompts a decision by Al Bruno to send out the field goal unit on third and 15. When you see that Toronto Argonaut defense, all the linebackers up on the line of scrimmage, those offensive backs of Hamilton got to come up and get in there to block. Darrell Ford got too much penetration, and he was there to sack Dillon. Very warm evening in Hamilton. And I'm sure as this game progresses, that will be a factor. Paul Osbaldiston puts it through. And it's now a 14-point game. The Argos leading with 537 remaining in the half. It was very warm Thursday night at Lansdowne Park in Ottawa as the Rough Riders won their first game of the season. A 50-46 shootout with the Edmonton Eskimos as they amassed over 1,100 yards offense. And there were some very tired football players gasping for air at the conclusion of that one. Well, so you know what? I have fun in all the games. And I don't, I don't know if I had more fun than that one the other night. I, that ball just seemed to be going up and down the field as faster than we could stay with it. But it, that was a great game to do. No, I don't think anyone expected 96 points. I know I didn't. Well, there have been a lot of high-scoring games this year in the CFL. There are probably a number of reasons for it. Each team seems to have not only one, but two quarterbacks capable of moving the football. Teams are getting rid of the ball so much more quickly in blitz situations. And as one coach said, there has been a liberalization of the holding rules. Lorenzo Rivers on the return. Stopped at the 20-yard line. That's where the 
Argos will scrimmage. Scott? John, the Ticats are a bit thin at running back as we speak. Derek McAdoo has twisted his ankle twice tonight. They are hopeful he'll be able to go back in. He'd better be able to because their backup, Ernie Schreimer, cannot go in at least until the second half. He had his bell rung in football terminology and isn't quite sure where he is right now. Lee Knight was the, that's what I was looking at. Lee Knight was in the running back position blocking on that second down situation. I don't know if he knows the running plays, but somebody, they may have to go to a one back offense with five receivers because they got two of them hurt. Well, Matt Dunnigan will like his statistics tonight a lot better than last week in Winnipeg in that 34-17 loss. Dunnigan fakes the hit screen, throws complete to Smith for the first down up at the 38-yard line. Well, that's a nice play. On that play, they've been throwing that hit screen out there. Smith would go out and block the corner of the first defensive back. This time he went out and faked at him and circled right back into the hole, and Dunnigan threw a dart nice and low to where if Smith doesn't catch it, nobody does. Four receivers wide to the left. Smelly this time is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. He may have squirmed ahead for a gain of a yard with 4.38 remaining. And there's another injured tie cat. It's Dan Sellers who is down. He's been hurt a couple times tonight, you know. I don't know if they have any more backup linemen either because Tim Lorenz is out of there. Second and nine, Toronto. And the handoff goes to Smelly, and Smelly will get about three yards, but not enough for a first down. Stopped by Rod Skillman and Daryl Patterson. And the Argos again send out the punting unit. 4.05 remaining in the half. Toronto leading Hamilton 24-10. That play surprised me a little bit on a second down, eight or nine situation. I wasn't expecting the run by Smelly, but it's didn't work very well. They got two yards, so they got to give it up. Blaine Schmidt moves in to center the ball on third down. Earl Winfield is the lone man back for this kick by Glenn Harper. Penalty flag as Winfield loses yards back to the 20-yard line. It's a hard punt to cover, Don, because he, Harper kicked it right to the middle of the field. They got a break because he tried to go outside and got knocked backwards. They ended up losing yards on it. A loss of eight after a 41-yard kick by Harper. And an additional loss as a result of the penalty, much to the chagrin of head coach Al Bruno. Hamilton, number 25, first down. So we'll, we'll see how they line up this time. So I'm trying to see who's in the ball game. I see uh, Sam Laux. Well, it looks like Lee Knight is in at that. No, McAdoo, McAdoo is back is in the back. ball game. Oh, okay. Knight is there, but he goes to his slot back position. McAdoo, the ball carrier. Penalty flag. James Parker was being held. By Sam Lox. And I think that's the reason for the flag. Oh, no doubt about that one. Sam Lox, when he comes out and blocks the end man on the line of scrimmage, in this case it was James Parker, they're hoping McAdoo can start in and then bounce outside. But holding Hamilton number 32 declined. Well, he really had a hold of the jersey of James Parker, and that flag came out of there in a hurry. Let's look at him. Watch him. Referee standing right there. You'll get caught like that. You can hold inside where there's a little crowd, but out in the open, they're going to catch you. Particularly when your jersey spreads about three feet. McAdoo and Smelly almost even in the rushing department. Here's another interception and another touchdown. Gaines runs it in after it was deflected. And the Toronto Argonauts have their second defensive touchdown much to the delight of Don Matthews who for a number of years was the defensive coordinator with the Edmonton Eskimos during their Grey Cup streak and again last year and specialized in defensive play while head coach with the BC Lions and 
Chris Gaines scores the touchdown on the Todd Dillon interception. So they, brought, they cross the back, and then Sam Louch comes underneath. He threw it high, tips off of Sam Louch's hands as he takes the hit. Gaines, as a linebacker, is throwing underneath him. He's just coming over to help out on the tackle. All of a sudden, the ball's in the air. That's pretty easy for him. 249 remains in the half. The point after by Lance Tromick. And the Toronto Argonauts are in control and will be back with the Toronto kickoff after this. Chris Gaines, who played his college football at Vanderbilt, as a matter of fact, holds the school record for tackles, made the interception and ran it into the end zone for his first touchdown as an Argo. So you can see the ball a little bit high for Laux, just tips in the air. Gaines doing what any good linebacker should, go to the ball. If it's caught, make the tackle, it's tipped up in the air, score a touchdown. That's pretty easy, isn't it? You know, Don Matthews was telling us, despite the fact that his team lost last week in Winnipeg, 34-17, they only allowed the Bombers 80 yards offense in the second half. Turnovers have been the big difference in this ball game tonight. Matthews has seen his team score two touchdowns as a result of turnovers. That's right, and uh, yeah, that's all you can ask. If they're turning over, you take advantage of it. Wally's the Tilney on the kickoff return. He's going to go all the way unless Reggie Pleasant can catch him, and he won't. But there's a penalty fly. I think it'll probably be offside Toronto. It'll probably stand. Tilney has been threatening to do that all night. He finally burst 93 yards for the major score. Well, he's a special teams player of the year last year in the Eastern Conference. Starts to his right, picked a hole. He finds it. Last time he got tripped up like that. This time he got that step and he was gone. Chomick never had a chance. Reggie Pleasant wasn't going to catch him. So Tilney's got great speed. Point after by Paul Osbaldison. And the Hamilton Tiger Cats have drawn within 14 points. It's been a game of big plays again, hasn't it? You know, we had Reggie Pleasant intercepting and running back. Then we get a touchdown by Moan off of a fumble. We get a 93-yard kickoff return. Don Wilson gets a big interception. Not grinding it out, are we? Are we going to have another 90-point ball game? I don't know. You know, <laughs> only 48 so far. But we're not halfway there yet. That's right. What were we the other night? Was it 36-13, something like that? Wally Zatilny out of Bishops. Originally drafted by Calgary. Traded to Hamilton in 1988, and he delighted this crowd and brought them back to life with that 93-yard kickoff return. He's a good guy on a team, too. He's a practical joker, always laughing, enjoys himself, works for the club in the offseason as far as in-season ticket sales, and really enjoys it. And he's a good kick returner, besides. Well, he's probably had personal contact with a lot of the fans who are at the game tonight. Uh, he probably has. Lorenzo Rivers on the kickoff return. He's got speed. There's a penalty flag back at the 40-yard line as Rivers just ran out of room on the sideline. He was stopped by Richard Nurse. Hang on, hang on. Ho, ho, ho. But it's another holding call against Toronto. So this kickoff return will be brought back. Well, that's hurt. That hurts your field position because they had it down in tight cat territory. Holding, corner number 17, first down. Dave Van Bellingham is guilty of the holding call. That takes the ball back to the 31-yard line. Boyd makes the catch up at the 49. 
Dunnigan sprints out. What he looks for is number 12, Stephen Jordan. When Jordan goes to the flat with Andrew Murray, he throws it right behind him into that hole, and Boyd's there to make the catch. First and 10, 216 remaining in the half. Dunnigan will run this with a penalty fly. All his effort will probably go for naught. A holding call almost certainly will bring it back. Saw the tight catch right away, the defensive lineman pointing backwards. You know, when the flag is thrown by the official behind the defensive line, it's going to be holding. John Matthews had an interesting comment about penalties. Corner number 50, first down repeated. He said, I never try and get involved because there's nothing you can do about it. it you really just have is. to coach them a little better. Yep. He says, yeah, you know, instead of saying they have to play better, he says, yeah, they have to play better, but we got to coach them better. That takes the ball back to the 39. It's first and 20. Daryl Smith was being harassed by Sonny Gordon as he came off the line of scrimmage and Smith is mildly protesting to the official that he had difficulty trying to get away. He got inside position on him. He's going to try to get inside. Let's say interfered with it a little bit. Uh, not enough to play. You can't call that. You're entitled to the ground you stand on. Second and 20. Sideline pattern, and that won't be enough for a first down. Jeff Boyd takes it out at the midfield stripe. He's four yards short of the first down. 158 is the time remaining in the half. Toronto leading 31-17. Midfield, third down, four, minute 58. A lot of time for more points. Jeff Boyd got about the maximum yardage. You know, on second down, you should go deep enough for the first down but he wasn't the primary receiver the receiver he was looking for was on the other side of the field and it was just an escape valve for Matt Dunnigan Wally Zatilney is back the lone member of the punt return unit for the tie Cats. look out by Branko Vincic, or he was gone again. He kicked that ball to the sidelines. You would expect Wally Zatilny to come straight up field, get what he can, and get out of bounds and stop the clock. But not that time. He started up field and saw a hole and went for it. That was a great return. He got it back to the line of scrimmage, a 34-yard run back after a 34-yard kick. Mike Kerrigan is back in at quarterback. He started the game, gave way to Todd Dillon. Throwing deep way over the head of Earl Winfield. But he had to get rid of that football. He was under pressure. He was just throwing it away. Rodney Harding got the pressure on him first, and he spun to get away from that, and James Parker's there. You see him plan. He's ready to throw, but here comes the pressure. He spins away from Harding. Now he just throws it away because he knows he's going to be in trouble. Threw it over everybody's head. 141 remaining in the half. Second and 10, Hamilton from the midfield stripe. 31-17, Toronto leads. Harrigan started the game, gave way to Todd Dillon in the opening quarter. Now he's back. It was trapped over on the far side. Reggie Pleasant tried to put a con job on the official over there, but he was having none of it. Well, he had a good look at it. You see Murray to the outside. They'd hit that out a couple times. The ball definitely skipped, hit between his hands and up into his arms. I'll tell you one thing. That is a long throw to gain 10 yards. 17 and 24, 41 yards from the hash mark to the sideline and in downfield 12. You better have a gun to throw it out there. It's one thing many quarterbacks discover when they come to the Canadian Football League. You've got to question a guy's arm. That's the best way to find out. Just put him out there and see if he can throw it. There was absolutely no question about that penalty call against Buchanan. He was on top of Rivers and had him in a grasp even before he caught the football. Not going to take any chances, right? Buchanan played with the Argos last year. He was in training camp with Hamilton. 
No yards. Hamilton number 18. No yards, first down corner. Tigers. And then he went to Toronto and played. He's back here. He's a linebacker. Backs up that middle linebacker spot. Loves those special teams. Good hitter. Well, they threw the flag on Sonny Gordon, but it was Buchanan who was all over Lorenzo Rivers. Both of them actually were inside that five-yard area. Well, they were fighting to see who's going to get to hit him first. Dunnigan fakes, throws deep for Boyd. Incomplete. He was working against Wilkerson. We saw Will Dunnigan fake that draw in the backfield, try to hold him. No chance. None at all. When Boyd went downfield, watch the coverage that Wilkerson has on it. Excellent job of defense. There's just no way anybody's catching that football. Second and 10. The ball is at the 37 to the other side. This one is complete for a first down. Trumaine Johnson catches it at the 51. He's had success going to those wide receivers tonight on that down turn in pattern at about 14 yards. He's hit Boyd on it a couple times. This time he goes to the other side of the field and hits Trumaine Johnson. Short of the first down, Murray, Andrew Murray, caught the ball at the 54. Brought down by Stephen Jordan. That's a good catch by Murray, but a dangerous throw by Dunnigan. Je Jordan wasn't that far away. It took the perfect throw and the catch by Murray to complete it. And second down, underthrown was Daryl Smith. And the Argos, with 55 seconds remaining, will be forced to kick, but there is a penalty flag. Toronto. Offside, Toronto number 85, declined. Third down. The offside call against Toronto, obviously declined, and the Argos will be forced to send out the punting unit. We remind you that Carl Brazley of the Argos will be joining us at halftime, and we'll also hear from Mike hey, Riley, go. the head coach of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. His team coming off a disappointing 24-23 loss last night to the BC Lions as Lou Pisaglia kicked a 42-yard field goal on the final play of the game. Well, the fans have really taken to Wally Zatilny tonight, and understandably so. A 93-yard kickoff return and a 34-yard punt return. He has that quickness to get through the first wave of tacklers. And he's tough, too, when it comes time to hit him. When he sees those two guys coming, you know this. If you can get there fast enough and with that acceleration, as you mentioned, the quickness, he got through there, and he took a head-on into Gaines, the middle linebacker. That's not very really wise, is it? His brother, Steve, is a rookie this year with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. A 20-yard run back that time for Wally Zatilman. 44 seconds is the time remaining in the first half. 31-17, Toronto leads. Kerrigan continues at the control. Looking to set up the screen. There's McAdoo. McAdoo gets a good block from Richardson. But there were a couple of Argo defenders named Moan and Gaines who managed to get over and bring down McAdoo. Well, that's a great play by Don Moan. He's a linebacker to the other side of the field. And he saw the screen and he took off, jumped on his back and brought him down. That's a good effort. So he reads the screen. Now, if on the other side of the field, you better just go help anywhere you can. Gaines tries to hold him up and then he saddles and throws him down to the ground. That's good effort. Second and three, it's McAdoo again. He gets the first down with 15, now 14 seconds remaining in the half. The Ticats want to get that ball at least into the field goal range of Paul Osbaldiston before the gun sounds. See Kerrigan, now this is a hurry up offense. He's got the play called. The referee, he should be, the ball should be snapped now. He's wasted too much time with 14 seconds. Get it snapped, he lost four seconds. It's intercepted. Daryl Ford picks it off at the 47-yard line. And one second remains in the first half. Well, both Garrigan and Todd Dillon have had problems with that Toronto 
defensive unit tonight. And much to the dismay of Al Bruno, Kerrigan throws yet another interception. Well, with one second left, you know, I know he's trying to get the ball down the field into the field goal range, but, you know, he might as well throw it, and he did. He took the chance. He gambled and lost. Now we'll see what Dunnigan does, see if he throws it down the field. Three wide receivers to the right. He may just decide to Hail Mary one down the field. From the shotgun, he is going to throw it deep down the sidelines, way over the head of any potential receiver. As a matter of fact, it's intercepted by Lance Shields as he rolls through the end zone on the final play of the first half. It is Toronto 31, Hamilton 17 of the half, and welcome to Live at the Half from Iverwind Stadium. There has been an explosion of scoring to this point in the CFL season. Two of three games uh, have seen the winners score 50 points each. In this first half alone, we saw a scoring explosion. So nobody knows better uh, than Carl Brazley how tough it is to play defense in the CFL these days. Uh, I would suspect the issue with respect to the Argos may have been somewhat overtaken in the first half of this game, given you had a couple of defensive touchdowns. Your defense played pretty well, but go ahead as a veteran and make the case for the beleaguered defenses the league over. Well, you know, you have to give a lot of credit to the offenses around the league. They're getting the real mobile quarterback, the, the three-foot receivers, and they're really mixing it up. We're seeing the run and shoot again in a lot of different versions. Uh, we have a version. A lot of different teams have versions, and uh, it's just really tough to defend. Wonder about the quarterback. I think that's a very legitimate point because there's a good quarterback in every CFL city these days. They've all got the quick release, the hot trigger, and uh, they seem to welcome being blitzed. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think the, uh, a lot of coaches have realized uh, the uh, asset of having a fleet foot quarterback. Besides trying to get the good coverage and the pressure, you also have to worry about uh, the quarterback coming out of the pocket sprinting or then taking off breaking contain or running the uh, draws up the middle, the, the long draws. And it's really tough for our defense to defend against everything. Carl, if somebody had said to you as a defensive star, even as recently as a couple of years ago, in a few seasons you're going to have to score 40, maybe even 50 points to win a ball game, I think you would have taken insult to that. And I, I still do today. Uh, but, you know, the first part of the season we're seeing it. I think uh, later on in the season as defenses, Started to get adjusted to all the things that's going on. The scores will probably drop a bit. But right now, I think the offenses are in their glory, and they're really making it rough for us. The, the second half of these games seeming awfully long to defense? Oh, yeah. We're hoping the offense uh, does the scoring and keeps our defense on the, on the sideline. All right, Carl Brazy, thank you very much. Wish you best of luck in the second half. We appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us in Live at the Half. When Live at the Half returns to Iverwind Stadium, we'll join Bomber head coach Mike Riley live from Winnipeg. Stay with us. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers acquired veteran quarterback Tom Burgess on the eve of the season and as a result got off to a fast start. The Bombers are 2-1 and one and ready to host the Edmonton Eskimos and quarterback Tracy Ham. Ham took some punishing hits in an upset loss in Ottawa, the Eskimos' first defeat of the season. Edmonton at Winnipeg, Thursday at 8.30 Eastern on the CFL on CBC. Welcome back. Live at the half continues now from Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton. Next Thursday, we're in Winnipeg for the telecast of a game with teams that have identical records. Bombers and Eskimos both 2-1. and one. It is a surprise the Bombers are 2-1, and one, given their head coach said as recently as a couple of weeks ago, it'd take a couple of weeks for his team, perhaps even a couple of months for his team to gel. But the Bombers have a winning mark. They are 2-1, and one, would be 3-0, and oh, in fact, were it not for a missed or I should say the winning field goal by the BC Lions in the final play of the game at BC Place last night. Mike Riley is in Winnipeg to speak to us live now on Live at the Half. And Mike, the proverbial heartbreaker last night at BC Place, and many wonder why you did not go for the two-point convert on the go-ahead touchdown, but uh, it wasn't a simple misjudgment, was it? No, it wasn't really, Scott. It was a very unusual situation. We had been, uh, we fell the ward at a single point after our first touchdown there in the fourth quarter, and, and uh, they put the point on the scoreboard, and we played the rest of the time right down to 43 seconds with, uh, after scoring another touchdown, a three-point lead. With 43 seconds to go, they took that point off the board, and now uh, BC was driving, instead of for a tying field goal, they were driving down to uh, kick the winning field goal. It really surprised us. So when Pasaglia stepped up to boot the potential winning field goal, were you steaming? Oh, I was uh, trying to find out what was going on and if indeed we could get that point back on somehow. I didn't really uh, understand how that could happen like that. Well, Mike, Tom Burgess struggled last night. Danny McManus excelled for you late in the game with two touchdown drives. Are you faced with the decision now as to who to start when uh, you take on the Eskimos next Thursday night? 
Uh, Tom Burgess will still start for us, and, and uh, I think that what it did is it gave Danny a chance to really show people what he could do and the kind of quarterbacking that we can have on our team in a one-two punch. We're excited about that, and uh, I think that uh, it was important for Dan to be able to go in and do something like that for our team. Are you surprised by your team's early season success, given, as I mentioned earlier, you said it would take a while for your team to gel? Well, we have a lot of pride here on our football team, and uh, I think that uh, even in the last night's ball game, we've shown a lot of great effort, great special teams play, uh, great coverage on the team, some good defense. So uh, that's been able to carry us through, and I hope that we just continue to get better. We definitely have to be more consistent and move the ball and put points on the board like uh, the rest of the CFL has taken to doing this year. Mike, the Eskimos, despite the loss to Ottawa a couple of nights ago, are a good football team. You may well find out on Thursday night just how good your team is. Well, I think that's true. I think Edmonton is, uh, has shown themselves to be the class of the league, and it's going to be a great challenge for us. And we, We're going to have to play uh, the best defense of the year, and we're going to have to also keep the ball away from Tracy Hamm and that crew over there. Thank you for your time. Mike Riley in Winnipeg. We look forward to seeing you next Thursday night when we'll have the telecast of the Bombers and the Eskimos on the CFL on CBC. Well, tomorrow on Sports Weekend, we'll have the telecast of the second jewel of the Triple Crown of Horse Racing in Canada, the Prince of Wales Stakes at Fort Erie. And let's go there now and get a preview report from Ron McLean and Jim Bennett winning the Triple Crown this year, then with approval did last year, and of course with approval won it last year. And here at Ivor Wind on, the Argos lead by at least a couple of lengths at the half. Two touchdowns to be exact, Scott, 31-17, and Ron, turnovers have been a key factor in the Argos' win, or as in the Argos' lead, just as they were factors in their defeat last week in Winnipeg. Yeah, they came into the game with six interceptions, and they've thrown five more. That's 11 in, in two and a half games. That's too many. Uh, you're going to have the game like Dunnigan has, but over a period of time, when you start averaging four games, that's going to get you in trouble. And two of those turnovers led directly to touchdowns. The loose ball that Don Moan scooped up and carried in, and then the interception that Gaines carried in. You could also say that uh, the interception by Wilson indirectly led to the Kerrigan oh, or the uh, Dunnigan field, touchdown. Great field position. Puts it down on the two-yard line, made it easy for Dunnigan to score. Well, the Ticats will have to come back in the second half, and that will be underway in just a moment. Exclusive presentation of Miller Lite goes down great among friends. By Priority Courier, the official courier of the CFL. And by Diet 7 Up, challenge your taste. Toronto Argonauts enjoy a 14-point lead to start the second half, and the Argos will be kicking off to the Hamilton Ticats. One of the reasons they use this alignment to kick off is they feel it prevents the other team from picking out specific blocking assignments. They've been squibbing the ball along the ground, and this time it goes to Sam Louts, and he returns it to the 52. In the first half, the teams were even in first downs. And in net yards, the Argos had the edge. Those six turnovers were the big problem for the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the opening 30 minutes. Yeah, that's 45 yards of rushing the Argos had they had in the first quarter. They haven't run the ball really since. But you turn it over six times and a half, and you should be trailing. Mike Kerrigan has thrown two interceptions. He starts the second half, and he gives to Derek McAdoo. McAdoo won't go anywhere, picks up just a couple of yards. The Ticats still feel they can run against Toronto. They feel they're bigger, stronger along that offensive line and that people like Miles Burrell can handle a James Parker and Jason Riley can handle Rodney Harding. Well, McAdoo on that time tried to run behind Miles Burrell, the biggest guy they have up there, and he couldn't find a hole there. And when he cut back, pursuit by the Argo defense got him. Second down, incomplete. There's a penalty flag. Winfield was the target. Rocky DiPietro may have been interfered with by Don Wilson. I think that's what it's going to be. Kerrigan got a lot of pressure from number 77, Rodney Harding and Harold Hallman, and he was looking for Winfield going one-on-one -on -one downfield. He had to throw it before Winfield was ready, but they got him for grabbing DiPietro. 
forward pass interference. Going to number 20. First down. And it was Don Wilson who had that first half interception that he returned for 64 yards. That was called for the pass interference against Rocky DiPietro. CFL's all-time leading receiver hasn't caught a pass yet in tonight's ball game, but that interference call does provide the Ticats with a first down at the 40. This one is deflected, and it's intercepted by Reggie Pleasant. That was just a bad throw. He had a two receivers, both running quick out to the short side of the field. There's not a whole lot of room here. Look at the replay. There won't be a lot of room, but watch the ball in the air. Let's see what happens here. He got tipped. That's what happened. You got to get him down on a three-step drop. You must get the defensive lineman's hands down. And Don Moan got his hand up there and tips the football, and Pleasant gets a turnover. So both Hamilton quarterbacks, Kerrigan, and Dillon have been guilty of throwing three interceptions as Kevin Smelly gets the call again and is stopped by Pete Gathopoulos and Daryl Patterson. This is the way the Argonauts open the football game. Same set, just running a straight ahead, a dive play, meaning the back runs straight ahead, the quarterback gives him the ball, and he just runs. Had success with that, got seven yards. Second and three, Toronto, there seemed to be a mix-up. Dunnigan had nobody to hand off to. A bit of ad living there as he throws to Ryan Hansen. Matt Dunnigan made a mistake. If you notice, both of his backs went to the right. Dunnigan opened to his left. He got a completion out of it, so he'll add some more to these statistics, but that was a mistake on his part. The three quarterbacks combined have thrown eight interceptions tonight. Tumaine Johnson was being covered by Wilkerson. I think that was a mix-up in the pattern that Johnson was supposed to run, and that's not surprising in view of the fact he's only been in camp since Monday. Now, you're asking a lot out of a guy to come in and go the first half and didn't, didn't appear to make any mistakes at all. First time they go to him in the second half over his head. Second and 10. In and out of the hands of Andrew Murray, so the Argonauts will send out the punting unit. Well, turnover, and they escaped. Hamilton escaped without any points, but when you throw the three-step drop that Kerrigan likes to throw, you must get the hands down. In that case, Toronto just didn't take advantage of it. Again, just one man back. That is Wally Zatilne. I'd be kicking this ball out of bounds. I wouldn't be kicking it anywhere near, near Zatilne after those two returns in the first half. High snap. Zatilne takes it at the 20-yard line. And Ryan Hansen just got him up at the 37. 11.58 is the time. Both Al Bruno and Don Matthews became head coaches in the Canadian Football League in 1983. But while Bruno has remained in Hamilton, Don Matthews, who started in 83 in B.C., moved on to become an assistant in Edmonton prior to taking over as head coach of the Argos on November 23rd last year. Uh, he's had a good record in B.C., and, you know, that was uh, when they had some problems out there. He, he was let go, and as a result, went back up and worked with Joe Faragelli and the Edmonton organization, and now he's back in Toronto. He's trying to put together a football team, but he's going to have to do some building with this one. Got a, a lot of young guys, not a veteran club that he had in Edmonton. Mike Kerrigan directs the attack, first and 10 from the 37-yard line. He finds the inside man. And Lee Knight takes it to midfield. Line up DiPietro and Knight side by side. And as they come off, DiPietro lets Knight come right behind him. And it's just like a pick or a crossing pattern. It's more like a crossing pattern because they're too close to pick. He just gets inside position on the defender and Kerrigan finds him. First and 10 from midfield. Winfield goes wide to the right. Walter Murray splits left. Walter Murray makes the catch. And as he comes down, he loses the football. It's incomplete. I thought he had it, but they roll an incomplete pass. Both Pleasant and Murray were shaken up on that. See the ball thrown into the hands. 
caught went right through them so the hit really didn't cause the fumble it slid right through and Murray's a little bit slow getting up off the ground took the hit in the middle of the back with his back to us when he went up to haul that one in it looked as though he had it but it slipped away and Murray now goes out of the ball game and Zatilny will come in as a wideout. Good crowd tonight at Iberwind Stadium in Hamilton. Fans of all ages what on said? a beautiful summer evening. You said he should have caught that pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a nice night to have him. I, she seemed to be happy a little boy a while ago with the tiger waving that around. Very nice night for him to sit out and watch football. Second down ten for midfield. Zatilny makes the catch. He's driven back, but his forward progress will be about a step shy of a first down. He went back and came back to the football, but the speed and the hardness of the throw, he had to come back a little farther when he caught it. And he comes up just a touch short. He needs to get to that white line, it looks like. Put him about an inch or so short, but they'll go after this one. They're going to measure to make sure. What do you suppose Al Bruno said to the Ticats at halftime? Well, I think all you can say is, you know, you're beating yourselves. When you turn the ball over, you're beating yourselves. You don't give yourself a chance to win. If you play an error-free football game, still doesn't mean you're going to win. But every you start turning it over five, six times a half, making it very difficult on yourself. Just go out and play football, cut down the turnovers, and you got a shot at it. Six interceptions so far, two by Pleasant, one by Gaines, one by Ford, another by Brazley, and one by Wilson. And the fumble recovery by Don Moon that went for a touchdown. Coach Don Matthews said the Argos have to quit shooting themselves in the foot. Those statistics are exactly what the Ticats are doing shooting themselves in the foot. That's, that's what they've done. You know, they've given up good field position and given up touchdowns. They maybe not directly, but Wilson did a two and Moan did score. Chris Gaines scored off of one, so you're really hurting yourself. Third down gamble, Kerrigan keeps. He's across the 45 yard line. That will be a Hamilton first down. 10 20 is the time remaining in this third quarter. We need a touchdown. Hey, Rod Gilman knows what they need. He said we need a touchdown. And I'm sure right now he's enjoying the rest he's getting and hopes that offense stays out there for a while. Well, I'll tell you, if you, you can tire the other team's defense out, and as we've said many times, your offense gets stronger the longer it's on the field. One of the reasons they lead the league in average game for pass has been the work of Earl Winfield. There's that handoff from behind to Derek McAdoo. He fumbles the ball. Toronto's got it back. Franco Vincic picks it up. John Field, the safety man, and Don Moan, the linebacker, are the ones that caused the fumble. And Vincic's there to take it, and another turnover and good field position again. You say the handoff. He'll pass him up, put it in the back door. Now, just run to daylight. He cuts inside, but here comes the hit. See, number 26, Field, grabs that right arm, and when he pulls it around, the ball pops loose. And again, good field position. First and 10, Toronto. The Argos at the 37. They gave it away so many times last week against Winnipeg. They're getting the breaks against the Ticats. And Jeff Boyd down the sidelines, making the catch, cutting back for some blocking help. And then he runs into a big hit at the 20-yard line by Sonny Gordon. You know, yesterday, Don, you think about the meeting we had with Coach Matthews. I asked him if Jeff Boyd had slowed down in, in because of that injury he had a year ago or so with his leg. He said, no, he still ran a 4-5. Well, he showed me right there he can still run. That was a great pattern, a deep out. He kept everybody in that time, worked one-on-one -on, -one on Wilkerson, and it's a deep throw. Watch how long the ball's in the air. That's a long one, but watch the speed as he turns upfield on Wilkerson. Now he cuts back in looking for some help. He does get a couple good blocks downfield. There's one of them. I think it was Tremaine Johnson made one and Daryl Smith. But look at the tackle that Sonny Gordon delivers. And Jeff Boyd is still down. He actually was released by the Ticat or by the uh, Argonauts prior to their first game. He's on his way home to California, ready to give up any aspirations of continuing his football career. 
with an injury in the very first game. The Argos needed a receiver. They got on the telephone and finally tracked him down, and he headed back to Toronto and played last week against Winnipeg and has made a contribution tonight against Hamilton. I don't think there's any doubt that Jeff Boyd knows how to catch the football. We've seen that for a lot of years, and they get their timing down, they'll be tough. Lorenzo Rivers into the ball game in his place. He's the designated import tonight. That pass intended for Trumaine Johnson goes incomplete. That was excellent coverage by Lance Shields on Trumaine Johnson. Took him down the field to the goal line, which again is about a 15, 20 yard pattern, and then come back. But Lance Shields was not going to be denied. He just cut in front and knocked it down. 8.40 is the time remaining in this third quarter. Second and 10 from the 20. Dunnigan to the sidelines, and Andrew Murray, or Paul Masadi, I should say, is out of bounds, but should have a first down. He sure did. He got just about a step past that first and 10 marker and turned to the sidelines, and Dunnigan delivered it on time. And wh when you deliver it on time, it's a hard pattern to stop. Grover Covington's always going to be around the quarterback. You know that. So from inside the 10, it's first and goal for the Argos. Dunnigan fakes, throws, and it's incomplete. Andrew Murray was the man Dunnigan was looking for at the goal line. Good coverage, Stephen Jordan, number 12, down, break to the sideline. Jordan right on his back, just wouldn't allow him to catch the football. There's the throw, look at the coverage. Boom, got that left hand in there and just popped it out of there. Dunnigan swings it out to Lorenzo Rivers, he'll score. About all you can ask, one-on-one, -on -one, your fast man, Lorenzo Rivers, on a linebacker, Frank Robinson, he should outrun him, and he did. Well, Lorenzo Rivers has that speed. He can motor. Out of Tennessee Tech. And the Toronto Argonauts now lead by 20 points with the point after to come. Lorenzo Rivers starting the game as the designated import. Coming into the ball game as a replacement for the injured Jeff Boyd in this third quarter. Penalty flag as Chomick adds the point after. The point will stand as it was an offside call against the Hamilton Ticats. We'll be back with the Toronto kickoff after this. Touchdown was scored, but his 63 yards on the pass from Dunnigan was the big play in that 73-yard drive. Six plays, a minute and 36, and here's the culmination, Lorenzo Rivers scoring. There it is. You flip it out to your running back. You got a linebacker, Frank Robinson, trying to run with him. You should win the race. Lorenzo Rivers did. Now, Dunnigan paid a pretty good hit. You know, when you run that pattern, you got no one blocking backside. Watch number 37, Sellers. Didn't rough him up too bad, but he hit him. Dunnigan says... I'll take the hit. Touchdown. And then Dunnigan celebrates the throw to Rivers for the major score that gives Toronto a 21-point lead. Wally Zatilny looking for some blocking help. He doesn't need much. Up to the 53-yard line. He has tremendous acceleration. I think I'd start looking for somebody else to kick it to, you know. He's almost broken. He did break one. He almost broke two other ones. 30-yard return again, and between the 50 and 55-yard line. Again, great field position. 7.57 remains in this third quarter. The Argos were offside on the kickoff, but the Ticats have declined the penalty because they have good field position at the 53. Winfield wide to the left. Harrigan continues at quarterback. Winfield, the target, makes the catch at the 40. It's a good throw. Get that ball up and down. When you get it down like that, Winfield coming back can make the catch. Watch number two, Pleasant. He sees the ball too, but Winfield's body prevents him from getting there to intercept it. That's just good offense. Not only is it extremely warm tonight in Hamilton, the humidity is high, and that moisture is causing problems with our video signal. 
apologize for any difficulties you may be encountering with your home receiver. Winfield takes that pass directly in front of Carl Braisley, and it's another Hamilton first down. Up the field about four yards and then a quick slant to the inside. One, two, three, throw it right now. You see number 20, Don Wilson, run into the flat, throw it right behind him. He can't get it right into the arms of Winfield. Braisley did an excellent job of defending. He actually had a hand on that football. He sure did. But if you throw that ball down, you can't really get in there to knock it down. A reverse with Winfield. He's going to throw, looking for Zatilni, incomplete. Well, that's a little different wrinkle to what the Ticats did last week against Ottawa, where McAdoo threw on the option and Winfield scored a touchdown. This time, Winfield threw the ball looking for Zatilni, but Zatilni had attracted a crowd. He had three defenders with him. Boy, he sure did. Watch Winfield coming, but watch when the ball is in the air, Don. You talk about that crowd, there's going to be three of them. He had to throw it. He, he paid the price for throwing this football. The ball was thrown. There's three white jerseys around it. Second and ten. The ball is at the 28-yard line. Harrigan going deep for Winfield. He won't catch up with this one. He had two defenders back there. Dave Van Bellingham and Carl Brazley. Brazley had him if he went to the outside. He knew he had help inside, and sure enough, he needed it. Van Bellingham just trotted, trotted over there, got in the way. There's no way for Winfield to catch it. That was their game plan to try to take Winfield out. And he's caught five passes, but he hasn't had the real big plays yet that we're accustomed to seeing from him. Paul Osbaldiston will be attempting a 34-yard field goal. That's the first time that Osbaldiston lined up to kick a field goal was an omen. He split the uprights from 53 yards out, but it was wiped out by a penalty call. And there's another penalty flag as he misses this field goal attempt, but he may get a reprieve. Offside Toronto. Well, he made one, and they were offside. It's only fair play to get another chance at this one. Offside. Going on number 20, third down repeated. So the Ticats move five yards closer, and this will be a 29-yard attempt by Osvaldison. Todd Dillon is out there to hold, and this time, Osvaldison puts it through. 529 remains in the third quarter. It's now an 18-point difference. Boys in blue who are causing the problems for the Tigers. No, they're being pretty friendly. It's those other guys that aren't friendly ones. They were anticipating a crowd, as we mentioned earlier, uh, better than 20,000. I think they've exceeded those expectations. Yeah, I think so. There's a pretty good crowd here tonight. Toronto Hamilton game always brings out a few more people. A little rivalry going. They won't be real pleased with the outcome so far, 38 to 20, but there's a lot of time left. Well, the Argos were concerned about the way they self-destructed last week in Winnipeg. The Ticats have been doing the same thing here at Ottawa Stadium tonight. Jeff Boyd back in the ball game. And Wilkerson takes him out of bounds. Very close to another first down. They'll spot it. Just shy of the 45-yard line. If it's touching, though, it should be a first down. No, well, I guess it isn't touching. No. Nope. has had more yards tonight than Winfield. Three receivers lined up in an I formation wide to the right, and Dunnigan, the quarterback, keeps for a first down with 4.50 remaining in the third quarter. When you put three receivers to this side and three to the others and none and no running backs in the backfield, and it's a running play, you can almost bet Dunnigan's going to carry the ball. Just go forward and get the first down. They have to cover him. They've got to send people out there. Not a bad move with a guy that's got Dunnigan's ability to run anyway. Paul Masadi lines up at one wide out position, replacing Tumaine Johnson. 
Jeff Boyd goes to the other. Penalty flag. Dunnigan is caught from behind by Peter Giftopoulos. And they're going to get a procedure call on their left guard. Dan Ferron, I believe, moves. So they'll decline this. That was an excellent move by Ferron. He just moved, but I mean, a good move by Giftopoulos. Make a procedure. Toronto number 69. Decline. Second down. Procedure. The penalty is declined. He doesn't like what he sees. Now he's got to try to escape. With number 90, Giftopoulos got up a pretty good head of steam. Just reach out, grabs him in the ankles. So makes their second and about 17. Giftopoulos, a Hamilton product who has developed into a pretty solid linebacker. Here comes the pressure, but Dunnigan rolls away from it. And completes the pass to Paul Nassati. Knocked out of bounds by Lance Shields. Is complete to... It's just shy play. of the first down. It will be third and about one. I don't think there's much question. The Argos are going to go after this one. Now, let's see if they set the, that weird formation again. Put all the receivers out. I guess if they anticipate Dunnigan sneaking, they don't cover the receivers. But if he stands up and throws it to one of them, they'll wish they had. So you kind of put the defense in a bind when you do that. On third down, the Argos go into a huddle as well. See, there it is. No running backs in the backfield. Donegan will keep. Will he get it? Grover Covington grabbed him, tried to drive him back. The initial path that Donegan attempted to travel was blocked. If he gets to the white line, the little white line, he makes it. That's all we're going to have to look at. And it would appear he's made it. We'll make it by about the, the stripe of the football. The peg will be just on the, on the left side of the football. Let's see. First down, Toronto. Now Bruno doesn't like the way that ball was spotted when Dunnigan was stopped as he was forced to go to the outside. He kept those legs driving and was able to surge ahead. Well, he sure did. That's good effort by that front five of the Ticats that time. They really clogged the middle up on him. Ted Schmidt's the defensive line coach. He likes the way they played that one. Don't see Daryl Smith do that very often. No, it almost looked like he took his eye off of it a little bit too soon. They streak the receivers downfield, try to clear it out, and then duck him back underneath and find an open area, but just didn't squeeze it. Most times when you go inside, you can anticipate a hit coming in that area, but he had nobody close to him. Well, you know, what tell receiver, you may as well catch it because they're going to hit you anyway. <laughs> you know, even if you miss it, they hit you, so you might as well catch it. Well, again, the tremendous humidity tonight is causing some technical problems, and Lorenzo Rivers is causing some problems for the Hamilton Ticats defense. Remember, we said we were going to see that option off the dive. The, the halfback will dive. Smelly. What? There it is. There's the dive. Now, Dunnigan's going to option. Left-handed pitch. Get it outside to the speed back. Rivers has it, and he just ran straight ahead, and he's going to pick up that first down. Lorenzo Rivers, the D.I., into the ball game with Tremaine Johnson out. Earlier as the D.I., Rivers had replaced Jeff Boyd and scored a touchdown. With Tremaine Johnson going out, Paul Masati comes into one of those receiving positions. And I Rivers see. goes into a running back spot. You see what they need, about eight inches. Now, do they do it again? The last time they ran the court, they should still make it because they have to give them a yard on the ball, but... I think they do the same thing. See, they can stop him again. But you're right. They didn't think they'd get a full game out of Tremaine Johnson tonight. I, you're asking a lot for a guy. This is a wide field that a lot of people coming up here don't realize. He's probably an awful tired man tonight. Masadi, good receiver anyway. But there it is. Well, it's worked twice. Why not try it again this time? Dunnigan fumbles the football. He reached ahead. Going to come down to the spot. That's a heck of a play by Covington. The Ticats defensive unit congratulating each other. They feel they've stopped them. Let's see where the spot is. I kind of think they did. I don't know. I think he's a little short. We'll see, though. Yes, he is.
Dunnigan lost control of the ball on the exchange with the center. And although he got it back and tried to squirm ahead, he did not get far enough. Ball went right through his hands, right through Dunnigan's hands. He had those hands together, and he came apart, went right through, up off of his chest. He's just fortunate to get it back, but Covington got a hold of him. And he's not going to drag Covington very far. First and 10, Hamilton taking over at the 41-yard line. Kerrigan fake. Was forced to pull it down, and James Parker was there to pull him down. That's good pass rush. That is good defense. Kerrigan tried to step and throw the ball, and he had to pull it down. When he went to do it again, there was nowhere to step. The pocket collapsed right around him. Let's see what happens. So he goes to throw, has to pull it down. Now there's no room. And there they come. Parker and his buddies are there. Parker, he still gets after him, doesn't he? Many people wondering if the quick had gone out of James Parker's name. I, I think he can still play from what I've seen tonight. This is our first chance to see him. But he's all right. I'll take him. Number two all time in CFL sacks. Number one is Grover Covington. Number one in reception for that man, Rocky DiPietro. DiPietro is at his best against the zone defense. He just goes down the field and finds a hole, and Kerrigan will find him. Watch how, how much room there is. There he is, sitting right in there in front of the safety man and behind the linebackers. That's Di Pietro's first catch tonight. His sixth catch on the season, 661 career reception. Donegan forced, or uh, Kerrigan forced to pull it down again and run. And the Ticats just wish that he was as fleet of foot as Matt Dunnigan when he's forced to run with that ball. Yeah, this time they bring a middle linebacker with that front four, and he gets into that backfield in a hurry and forces Kerrigan to step up, but it was nowhere to throw by then, so he just ran with it, and you're right. There was a lot more room if he was quicker. Lorenzo Rivers doing some stretching exercises over at that Toronto bench. The start of the ball game, his duty was limited to special teams. But with the injury to Jeff Boyd, and as a replacement for Trumaine Johnson, he is seeing some action. Don Moan is the injured Toronto Argonaut. He'll be out of there for three plays. And into the ball game will come Bruce Elliott. He's the Iron Man of the Toronto Argonauts. Eight CFL seasons without missing a game. That's a great statistic for a linebacker. You know, they're getting hit a lot, covering passes, getting blocked. Just to be able to survive eight straight years, that's pretty impressive came to the Argos in 82 from the BC Lions he played his college football at UBC and this is Harold Hallman hauling down Mike Kerrigan for a big loss on the final play of the third quarter so with 15 minutes remaining the Toronto Argonauts hold an 18 point lead technical explanation but I understand the humidity is still causing some problems with the microwave transmission okay <laughs> and I know you wouldn't understand not a chance Daryl Smith on the return but there's a penalty flag at the line of scrimmage the Argos apparently lined up offside And while they sort this one out, let's check the statistics for 45 minutes of play. The teams are equal in first downs, but down at the right-hand side, the second-last number is the key. Eight turnovers. That's Six interceptions and two fumbles. That's all you need to say. Too many. Especially, they, they led directly to points in two instances and set up touchdowns in the others. And you don't, you know, you got good defense, but you don't give them a chance if you put it down in the end zone. 
And that basically is the difference in the ball game. That's it. Jermaine Johnson is back in the ball game. Dunnigan throws complete to Darrell Smith. And he's brought down at the 33. There's also a penalty flag on the play. Major fall, Hamilton number 27, unnecessary roughness. First down, Toronto. The unnecessary roughness call against the Thai Cats. Well, that's the sign of success in the Hamilton area. The steel mills and across the way, Lake Ontario, and all the humidity in the area is what is causing the microwave difficulties. I don't know what caused the difficulties there for Jeff Boyd, but that ball bounced away from him. Again, I think he was looking upfield before he had possession of the football. On the play before, the unnecessary roughness was on number 27. That's Bobby Dawson, who's playing the corner in place of Gary Wilkerson. They came right back to test him on the next play, and Boyd took his eye off the ball. And that's, I don't know why, but that's what had happened. And Dawson, we're going to get a chance to see him play. May as well check him out while he's dressed. Three receivers come wide to the left to draw play, and Darrell Patterson got through before Dunnigan could get away. On that quarterback draw, Dunnigan runs it very well anyway, but that time Darrell Patterson was waiting on him. And when Dunnigan planted his foot to go, the middle linebacker was sitting there and made the tackle for about a four yard loss. So the Toronto Argonauts are forced to kick with 13.45 left in the ball game. Again, just that one man back, and there's a buzz of anticipation among the spectators at Ivor Wynn as Wally Zatilny waits for the Harper kick. after a 43-yard kick. Wally Zatilny is the man they're looking at. It appears as though he's okay. Zatilny, they put a bandage on his arm. It appeared as though he scraped or cut his arm when he was thrown out of bounds by John Fields. He had him out of bounds. He didn't really have to finish it off and throw him. And he landed on his arm. That's what the cut was for. Don Field signed this year on March 13th as a free agent by the Argos. Product of Southern Illinois, Wally Zatilny, product of Bishop. And he's been a threat to break it each time he's touched the ball on either a kickoff or punt return. He does have a 93-yard kickoff return. Be a little days sitting in there also. First and ten, Hamilton. The ball at the 50, the Argos. Todd Dillon in at quarterback to Derek McAdoo. Darrell Ford managed to stay with him, but he couldn't prevent him from getting a first down. Scott? Well, Don, we talked about this in Ottawa on Thursday night, and it applies here tonight. And that's the effect of these humid conditions on the big men, the offensive and defensive linemen, the Argos tackle six foot eight Chris Schultz told me he came into this game at 284 pounds expects to finish it at 274 and feel for two days like he's getting over a case of bad flu <laughs> maybe you and I should be down at field level Ron yeah I'd have to spend a week <laughs> Derek McAdoo throwing down back at the 43 yard line number 67 Chris Schultz 63 is Jim Kardash Very warm, very humid night here at Iverwind Stadium. Come on, let's go. Some players, Mark Napierkowski being one of them, taking some oxygen at the bench. 
Dillon fakes inside. He can't find a receiver and he can't find any running room either. Caught by Harold Hallman. Boy, his problem was he had the receiver. Lee Knight was standing on the sidelines, but the problem, Dillon couldn't get set because there was going to have to be a touch pass. He was going to have to go up and then come down. And he wasn't able to get the feet set to throw it, but Lee Knight was wide open. That will bring Paul Osbaldiston in for a 44-yard field goal attempt. He's been successful from 29 and 38 yards. And he's successful from 44. So with 11-28 remaining, it's now a 15-point game. The Argos leading the Hamilton Ticats. Toronto looking for its first win of the year. Hamilton with a record of 1-1, one and one, losing the season opener to Saskatchewan, winning last week against the Ottawa Rough Riders. That was a pretty heads-up play right there by the Toronto Argonaut defense. Richard Nurse, number 85, who comes in and blocks on the field goal at the last minute started running off the field like there were too many men on the field. The Argonauts didn't fall through it and went right with them. Had they not gone with them, Todd Dillon would have got up and thrown them the pass. He went down the sidelines all by himself. That's heads-up play. Next week, will be in Winnipeg as the Blue Bombers entertain the Edmonton Eskimos. And Jeff Boyd, a former member of both organizations, takes the pass out of bounds for a first down at the 53. Driving, getting turned, and break to the outside. Boyd did it well. Dawson fell down, was in no position to cover. I think he feels like a lot of these players feel right now. He'd like to uh, close his eyes and forget about it. I'd like to have, go Betty by. <laughs> Get some place to lay down and sleep. First and ten from the 53. Smith makes the catch. And it's taken out of bounds. And there's a penalty flag. The pass actually incomplete as he was unable to hang on with Sonny yep. Gordon all over him. They're going to call roughing on Rod Skillman. He was really upset with the call. We'll get the replay. Major foul, roughing the passer, 59 Hamilton. Let's take a look at this. Skillman says he didn't do anything. He really protested this call quite a bit. Let's see. I don't know can't hit him like from the referee's vision you're hitting him across the side of the head you know if he'd have just grabbed him but he got in so you pay for it it costs you 15 when you don't need it Murray makes the catch down at the fort no I Call guess that ball complete. slipped away from him a heck of an effort you got Jim Rockford floating around back in the middle with nothing to do but go to the ball Watch Andrew Murray make the attempt. He goes up high, gets the hands on it, can't control it. And the referee right here, top left corner, has got the perfect view, and he makes the call. It's second and 10 from the 42. They've gone to the huddle with most all the second half just about. Daryl Smith takes it out of bounds at the 12-yard line. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Lance Shields covering the wide receiver, and number 18, Sonny Gordon, runs with Daryl Smith when he goes into the flat and turns up the sideline. Well-thrown ball by Dunnigan. Big game. 29 yards to be exact. And with 9.58 remaining, a touchdown here could pretty much put it away for the Argos. Yeah, with that much time left, look at the play. Gordon can't make the play. Smith grabs it. Smelly to the 10-yard line. Stopped there by Frank Robinson. Good hit by Frank Robinson. He come out of there, looked, looked like Smelly was going to have some room up the middle, and all of a sudden the hole closed. There's the player you were talking about earlier. Dave Richardson, who came to Hamilton from the Edmonton Eskimos. Joe Farragelli was telling us at training camp he had nine quality offensive linemen. He knew he couldn't keep them off. Yeah, that, that's one of the tough things. Well, we talked about that Eskimo organization. You know, they keep these guys there. 
They bring him along, teach him the way they want him to play in Edmonton, and then all of a sudden they're good football players. But when you have nine, that's just too many to keep around, and somebody else, somebody has to go, and another team benefits from getting it. Johnson and Smelly go out for the Argos. Rivers and Asadi come in. Daryl Patterson, who was shaken up in the first quarter, shaken up again in the fourth quarter. He'll go out of the ball game. Yeah, I should have had him, though. I should have been smarter. But good job, eh, bud? Run like hell. Oh, Impress the parents. Yeah, I'm happy for them. Yeah, hey, I'm happy for you. You're doing a hell of a job. I tried to throw the ball up the stairs. I only got in the fourth row. So. Well, after you get the ball, you had to jump up to get it over the, over the, the barricade. Oh. Well, you see that bandage on the left arm of uh, Wally Zatilny, but as he said he's all right. He'll be back. But right now, the Argonauts are driving. They are at the 10. Dunnigan doesn't get a chance to throw. Sellers making the tackle on Dunnigan. He's pulled down by Dan Sellers, and now there's some pushing and shoving after the whistle. Second time we've seen a rather minor outbreak. Skemp and Giftopoulos, it looked like. Dunnigan wanted to go to the one-on-one -on -one side. He put three receivers over here, and when he saw Sonny Gordon moving from his halfback position into the deep middle, he knew Lance Shields had to cover Boyd one-on-one. -on -one. Lance Shields won the battle, did a good job covering him. Lance Chomick lines up for a 22-yard field goal attempt. His only try previously tonight came from 48 yards out on the very first offensive series of the Argos. And he puts this one through. And that restores the Argos' 18-point lead with 8.34 remaining. Toronto Argonauts preparing to kick off following that Lance Tromick field goal. They've kicked the ball along the ground most occasions tonight. The one time they went deep, Wally Zatilny ran it back 93 yards for a touchdown. And he's standing back there waiting on another one. And with 8 minutes and 33 seconds left, trailing by 18 points, if the Ticats put a quick one on the board, this game's not over. There are 20,387 watching the game tonight at Ivor Wynn Stadium. We hope you're enjoying the action on the CBC Television Network and will be with us on Thursday night for our next game from Winnipeg Stadium, the Blue Bombers against the Edmonton Eskimos. Zatilny will get it. Watch out. Reggie Pleasant saved a touchdown. Well, you could see the whole opening. The Ticats did a good job. When you kick a line drive kickoff, you know, 38 return by Zatilny, but he's going to get that because a line drive, he's running back at you before you can get down there to cover it, and the Ticat front people did a great job opening the lane. That tackle right there may have prevented another one, but those line drives are run right back at you in a hurry. Wally well, Zatilny was disappointed that he didn't start tonight, but he is more than made up for it with his work on special teams. Don Dillon throws complete to Lee Knight. Wally Zatilny trying to block for him and that enabled Knight to get the first down. When you sprint out like that, the first read that you have would be Zatilny going deep, coming back to the sideline. But when he was covered, your backside receiver, in this case, Lee Knight coming across the field, you see him, gets across into the quarterback's vision. And that's the key. Get over there where the quarterback can see you. He'll throw you the ball. Back to the live action. It's first and ten from just inside the 35-yard line. Sideline pattern to Sam Lout. We get another rough on the passer call here. Let's we'll get a look at this one. Major foul, roughing the passer. Toronto number 38, first down Hamilton. That call goes against the middle linebacker, Chris Gaines. 
And that moves the ball inside the 15 yard line. Pass complete to McAdoo. He stopped at about the seven. Well, they're getting some pressure on him. You know, they, the last time they got called for roughing, so you know they're getting close. This time, Dylan takes it again. Now, you're responsible to, bl to block a linebacker, and he doesn't come, so you go out and check underneath. Dylan finds him, moving the ball. Got seven yards on it. Second and three. Hamilton trails by 18. Dylan throws to McAdoo, and he's hit immediately by Carl Braisley. And McAdoo might just stay down because he has had those ankle problems. Now he's going to get up. That was a me and you shot. That's a combination coverage. When they sit that ball out into the flat, Brazley sees it coming. See right there, they got an indecision. Now they got Brazley coming for a long way to make the, the cover, but just as he turns, gets that shoulder underneath. Good defensive play by Carl Brazley. And it is a Hamilton first down just inside the five yard line. First and goal, tie cap. They need to get in the end zone in a hurry, Don. 6.46, they've taken about two minutes off the clock. Time's gonna be their enemy in a few, few minutes. Gene Gaines was the enemy right there for Sam Lopes. Boy, Gaines came on that up the middle thing again. He comes outside the guard right where Ticats decided to run. But watch him to the left of your screen. Oh, no one blocked him, I see. He was up on the line. The center stepped to the right and the guard stepped to the left and Gaines couldn't believe it. Second and goal, this time from the six after that big play by Chris Gaines. Dylan throws, nobody near where Dylan threw the football. He had Lee Knight and Winfield both in the general area, but it wasn't even close. I think they have, yeah, they got to go for this one. Three points doesn't no good. They, they need seven on the board. So with 6.06 remaining, the Thai Cats gamble third and goal from the six. They got Murray to the left along with the rookie Richard Nurse at the slot back. Let's see what they're going to do. Dylan no. going to his no. right no. penalty flag. No. Winfield no. wouldn't have been able to catch no. that one anyway, but I think there's going to be a penalty call on Carl Brazley for interfering with the Hamilton wide receiver. Yeah, they're, they're going to call for interference, but when I said no way, that ball was overthrown the minute it left Dylan's hand. Forward pass interference, throw to number seven, first down. Brazley's asking, how come he can push off, but I can't push off? Because the guy with the striped shirt said you push. <laughs> That's as simple as you can make it. So it's first and goal now from the two. Three more tries at putting it in. McAdoo won't get there. Well, matter of fact, he may have lost the yard. And once again, it was Gaines. I mean, I don't know how he's getting into that backfield so quick. The well, last time, nobody blocked him at all. But this time, he was three yards in the secondary again. All right, let's take a look at it. Uh, they're both pushing a little bit. Uh, I, I think Brazley pushed a little more. But it was one of those situations where had there not been any interference, there was no way Winfield would have caught the football anyway. No, that would have hit the score clock down there. Dylan throwing for Winfield. This time he's got it again. There are penalty flags. But he makes the catch regardless. Four passing turns. Corner number seven. He climbs. That's good. The fifth touchdown reception of the year for Earl Winfield. All right, right here, what are you gonna do? Well, let's take a look at it. Just a, up the field, straight up the field. You're gonna just try to throw it to the outside, which he does. Winfield makes the catch, and he gets interfered a little bit by Brazley, but the ball is caught. I think they're gonna go after two here. Try to cut this thing to 10 points. If they don't, they need two touchdowns. If they get this, they need a touchdown on field goal. Not going to make it. McAdoo is prevented from getting to the end zone by Carl Brazley. 
That's right. Brazley, big play right there. Left his man, made the tackle. 4.58 is the time remaining. We'll be back with the Hamilton kickoff after to cover 75 yards for the touchdown. A two-yard pass caught Dylan to Earl Winfield. There's some who might be wondering whether or not the Ticats might kick short with 4.58 remaining, trying to get the ball back. But Ted Schmidt has told the kickoff unit to drive it deep. Well, I see the, top, the uh, Toronto Argonauts are expecting a short kickoff. And look at the way the uh, Hamilton Ticats are lining up. They're sending everybody to the left side of the field, with the exception of the kicker, Paul Osvaldison. Well, all you do is move all your people over there with them. You only have one guy over. Keep two guys here to cover the kicker. Get everybody else over there. I don't like this. I, I kicked this thing deep with five minutes left. Well, it certainly didn't travel the required distance. It didn't go one yard. No, it didn't. Went, where'd it go? Kick from the 35, and it's on the 35. And that's where the Argos will take over. See, I think, I don't know. I, this is why coaches make decisions, but I, you need two touchdowns. There's five minutes left in the game. I think you kick it the way, you know, they've been squibbing it and having pretty good success, but right now, the Argonauts are in field goal range. Well, we heard Ted Schmitz very clearly during the break on the bench saying, kick it deep. Offside, Hamilton, decline. Legal procedure, legal Tiger kickoff. Offside on the play. That didn't even line. travel a yard. No. Legal Kick from the down. 35, and the Argonauts have the ball in the 35 and a half. And they're in field goal range right now. Ben Zambiazzi, a former star with the Tie Cats, works with the special teams in Hamilton this year. From the 35, first and 10, there's that hit screen to Masati. He gets inside the 30 to the 28-yard line, stopped by Stefan Jordan. Everybody says, why throw? That's really not a throw. That's a screen pass. you got people in there to protect it, catch that ball. He's got seven yards, second down and three. The key for the – Toronto's looking at one thing, make first down. Hamilton needs a turnover. Saudi had seven receptions last week in that loss to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. He was their number one receiver. Smelly had to get to the 25-yard line. He was stopped by Pete Giftopoulos. And they're going to spot this ball just he's about, about two feet short. He's about the, the length of the football. Remember, they start on the 35 and a half, so he doesn't need too much. 3.54 is the time remaining. Dunnigan's asking for a measurement. And he's going to get it. I think, you know, if it's a yard, a lot of times the official will say no, but when you're inside that, he's going to give you the chance to see just how much you need. About the length of the football. Isn't that what you said? Yeah, I was just going by where they started. Got some great eyes, right? Half time, I can't find the ball. 3.50 <laughs> remaining. 41-29 is the score. Toronto leading. The Argos threatening here to add to the advantage they enjoy. Dunnigan gets inside the 25-yard line for another Toronto first down, but more importantly, he will use up more time on that clock. That's the key thing there. They took three plays to make a first down. Clock's running at three minutes and 25 seconds. This has been a departure from what we saw from the Argos in the first two games and in the first half. They are using a huddle, but Coach Matthews said they might just do that. He said they can use it any time they want. If they want to use a hurry up, fine. If they don't, fine. Grover Covington is after Dunnigan, but he won't catch him. Dunnigan dives at the 17. 2.52 is the time left. 41-29. Toronto leads Hamilton. The cast originates at Winnipeg Stadium as the Blue Bombers take on the Edmonton Eskimos. 
teams with identical records of two wins and a loss. Winnipeg losing last night, 24-23 to the BC Lions. Edmonton upset Thursday night, 50-46 by the Ottawa Rough Riders. We've talked about the heat, the humidity, and the toll it is taking tonight at Iverwind Stadium, and there you see evidence of what we're talking about. You're awful tired about right now. When you're wearing the black jerseys that Hamilton are and you're losing by 12, you're a little bit tireder. Second and three. Dunnigan fires inside to Daryl Smith, and Daryl Smith gets to the one. Loses the football, Hamilton recovers. Well, they got it back. The defense turned it over. I don't really think it's great field position, but they didn't get any points. They kept them out of the end zone. Three receivers. He lets Daryl Smith clear the linebacker. You see him go right by Grover Covington, number 77. He hits him, but a good hit downfield by Rockford, I believe, pops the ball loose. And Daryl Smith was struggling. He could see that end zone. He was trying to get there, and the contact from Rockford popped the ball loose, and the Ticats take over back at their own one-yard line. There it is. Good hit. Excellent hit by Rockford, and that ball pops out of there, and it looks like Patterson's right there to grab it. Well, 232 down 12. You got it on your own one. Your odds are pretty are stacked pretty high against you, but it can be done. Dylan completes the pass to Richard Nurse. He's at the nine-yard line. They had Winfield on a deep pattern. They're looking to him first. They're looking for Winfield deep. That's Dave Richardson getting up a little bit slow, but he's all right. Try to get it deep. If he's not open, you have to dump underneath. In this case, Nurse made the catch. I think the Argonauts will be looking for Winfield deep. 2.25, the time remaining. He rolls them. My cats are taking a lot of time in getting up over that football. Too long, man. Right? You're wasting time. McAdoo, the ball carrier, and McAdoo has the first down up to the 17-18 yard line. Stopped there by Daryl Ford. Get him on the ball. Should be on the ball. 210. You know, right now the referee's walking away from him. Well, they should be up over Five. the ball as soon as that whistle blows. Should be the ball should be snapped. When the whistle blows, the ball should be snapped. Wait to 10, 12 seconds before they snap the ball. Now he's wasting even more as he looks for a receiver. And has Richard Nurse got it? Yep. Yes, he has. Hamilton product out of Canisius University. Earned a great, earned a spot on this club and training camp. Did a good job. Hustle caught everything and come near him. Ball comes there. Good concentration. Tries to get out. No way. Now they're on the ball. 145 remaining. Penalty flag as Lee Knight was the intended receiver. We're going to get another pass interference call on Toronto, I believe. Well, as we look at the clock, we have 139 remaining. Four pass interference. Toronto number 26. First down, Hamilton. Pass interference call gives Hamilton a first down. Scott. Don, what a game Wally Zatilny has had, an even 100 yards in punt returns. I asked him how he's doing. He's one of the most engaging characters in the CFL. Said he's got a scraped arm and a Charlie horse, and he's also falling in love. He said it's just all closing in on him tonight. <laughs> Close. Close. Again, Nurse shows he can catch the ball in traffic, but they got to get moving. This one must be coming back. Tight cats are moving back. Must be a holding call. 134 is the time left. Holding. Hamilton number 51. First down repeated. Richardson was guilty of the holding violation. That takes the ball back to the 42. It's first and 20 with 134 left. The clock will not start this time until the ball is snapped. Sideline pattern intended for Murray incomplete. 
That was a good hit. Print out to your left. Coming from the backside, number 61, Branko Vincic. Little shot after the play. No harm. Now they're up over the ball. But the clock doesn't start now on the incomplete pass until the snap. And they complete it over the middle again. I think it's Nurse again. And Nurse is going to be short of the first down. He stopped at the 53. So it's third and about five. Play took five seconds. Let's see. Okay. Now the whistle's blown. That's good. Got it away in a hurry. That's good. Right in the middle. Deep for Raleigh's the tilting. He'll have to come back to the ball. Penalty fly. No question about that. Carl Bracey was all over. Tilney trying to adjust to the ball. Brazley just won't let him, will he? he? Just walks right into him and the flag comes out. Threw it off balance. Harold Hallman there to put him on the ground after he threw it. That's why that ball was up in the air. Quarterback throw the ball that far. You must step and throw. He threw it off balance. But they get a break with an interference call. 113 is the time remaining, and Harold Hallman is the injured player way back at the Hamilton 52. Well, when you get inside the 25-yard line, coaches won't really be happy with only getting three touchdowns on 10 tries. Now, the whole key of this game, you work your tail off to get down there at the scoring range. When you get a first down inside the 25-yard line, you want touchdowns. Three of 10 is 30%. We'll watch this as the season goes along. We'll find out who's the most efficient at putting the ball in the end zone on those first downs down in scoring range. Bruce Elliott comes into the ball game to replace Harold Hallman. On first down from the 10, end zone pass incomplete. Aimed in Earl Winfield's direction, it will be second. Down from the 10 yard line. I think that ball is actually just outside the 10, so they could possibly score a first down without getting a touchdown. We saw Winfield that time gone start to the inside and go back to the flag, but it was only one step, so he didn't get a good fake. They do have a chance to make the first down here. Bruce Elliott is coming on the blitz. There's the end zone throw over the head of Walter Murray. We had a mix up in the backfield. The two blocking backs, the two running backs blocked to the same side. As a result, they turned somebody loose. They turned Elliott loose, and that's why Dylan had to scramble. Well, if you've joined our telecast late, we are experiencing some video difficulties because of the tremendous heat and humidity this evening in the Hamilton area. One minute exactly remaining in the game, and this is the last gasp for the Hamilton Ticats, trailing 41-29, third down from just outside the 10-yard line. Dillon throwing it back across the formation, looking for Murray, incomplete. Dave Van Bellingham knocked it away, and the Toronto Argonauts will take over at their own 10 with 52 seconds remaining and leading by 12. They should have no trouble putting this one away. Yeah, with 52 seconds, even if they don't use up 52 seconds, they're not going to score 12 points. So the Argonauts are going to come out of here with that win that they sorely needed. You know. It's Come in here 0 and 2. You don't want to leave 0 and 3. Well, Don Matthews, prior to the start of the season, said he saw no reason why the team wouldn't score 40 points a game this year. They scored 41 tonight. First time that they have achieved that goal. Yeah, he's caught a lot of flack over that. Uh, I think what I heard him say one time is that their their goal was to score 40 points a game. Of course, I think that's every team's goal. But you know, a lot of times the defenses have something to say about that. And, Tonight they got their 40 and they kept Hamilton under. And that's, that's a win in any league. Kevin Smelly powers his way ahead for a gain of about four yards, taking the clock down to 48 seconds. 
And there'll be no hurry up offense here for the Toronto Argonauts. They'll use up as much time as possible as Matt Dunnigan takes them into a huddle. Another injury down there, though. Oh, he's getting Kill the break. Mark Napierkowski was forced to come into the ball game early for Tim Lorenz, who was hurt. Napierkowski a little slow getting to his feet, but he's back into his position defensively. Second down, it's Kevin Smelly again, and this should do it as he gets the first down out to the 23. 25 seconds of time remaining. The Argos started the game running the football with Smelly. They will likely end the game running the football with Smelly. Now Bruno coming into the contest that he felt that the Argos would attempt to run. That was the game plan of Don Matthews, but it was turnovers that really decided this one. Yeah, they put the tight cats in a hole in that first half and they had those five interceptions. One play. It's been tough to come back. Dunnigan drops to a knee with just four seconds remaining. And the Toronto Argonauts will be heading home tonight down the QEW with their first win of the 1990 football season. The Argos, a team many people pick to finish first in the East this year. I think they got a big game coming next week, don't they? Yeah, the Rough Riders, Ottawa Rough Riders coming in there Saturday. That'll be a good one. And we've got a big one with Edmonton Winnipeg Thursday. That's the ball game. The Toronto Argonauts taking advantage of all those Hamilton turnovers to register a 41-29 victory. The Argos now with the record of one and two, the same as Al Bruno's Ticats. A lone win for Hamilton in the very first game of the season against the defending Grey Cup champion, Saskatchewan Rough Riders. So the teams are even at one and two. Winnipeg still leading the East at two and one. The Ottawa Rough Riders, Hamilton, and Toronto with identical one and two records. 41-29, the final score favoring Toronto tonight over Hamilton. It's commonplace for the winning teams. The Argos get their 40 tonight. And as a result, the first renewal of the Argo Ticat rivalry this season produces the Argos' first victory and hands the Ticats a defeat. The Eskimos suffered a big loss in Ottawa this week, and they'll try to make the Bombers pay for it in Winnipeg on Thursday. We'll have the telecast at 8.30 Eastern, 